From Kyle Field on the campus of Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas, Fox Sports Net Southwest presents Aggie Football. This evening, it's the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs at 2-2 two and two to take on the number 24-ranked Texas A&M Aggies. They enter at 2-1. and one. Hi, everyone. Bill Land and Gary Reasons alongside. The buildup for this game has been unlike any other this year for Texas A&M. Shoot, everybody's a Monday morning quarterback. They all want to call the plays, and R.C. Slocum's going to give them something to think about tonight. Well, not a lot talking about the football game itself, but who's going to call the plays for the Aggies? Hey, R.C. Slocum kind of juggled things up when he decided to take Dino, Dino Babers away from that, that duty and going to put Kevin Sumlin in. 2.5 yards per play last week with Virginia Tech offensively. Not very good for the Aggies. He decided to make a change. Yeah, well, Aggies been going wrong direction offensively, and we had a chance to visit with Coach Slocum about the move. I've been disappointed in, the, in how we've performed offensively. And after the, the Virginia Tech game, I felt uh, st strong enough about it. I felt like it warranted me making a change in leadership of our offense. I wanted uh, a change in the play calling on game day, and uh, I made a change this week. I moved Kevin Sumlin, who has been the assistant head coach. I gave him, and he coaches the receivers, I gave him the additional responsibility to lead the overall offense in terms of game plan and to make the calls on game day. One other thing about the offense, the Aggies are certainly committed to youth when it comes to the quarterback position as Dustin Long will get the start, but they'll be two playing tonight. Well, they really will. They've decided to go with potential over experience. Mark Ferris, the senior quarterback, will not be playing. Dustin Long's going to need a second start of the season. Actually, not very good last week against Virginia Tech. Reggie McNeil, he'll come in as well, play. He's the, he's the freshman that is not tested, but a lot, of, a lot of potential there. So we'll see both those quarterbacks tonight for the Aggies. Louisiana Tech will not be intimidated here. They last week played at Penn State. State. They've got a win over Oklahoma State earlier this year. They throw it a bunch, 49 times a game. But Luke McCown is not their only weapon. They've also got a pretty good running game. Jack McGinnell likes his offense. They average over 400 yards passing per game. Pretty impressive. Luke McCown, fifth of the nation total passing. And when you got a running back in Joe Smith who's giving you 91 yards on the ground in a passing attack, that's pretty impressive. The Aggies may have their hands full. Well, the Aggies' defense has certainly been superb in the first three games this year. Their secondary will get a different test, though, tonight. Well, the secondary has to play well. They're going to have to move around. I think the secondary has to play well, especially with the safeties. Terrence Keel, the strong safety, is a big hitter. He's a senior. Jackson Appel, just a redshirt freshman, but he has shown over the first couple of games this year, Bill, that he is capable of making some big plays. He has a knack for the football. All right, that usually means if the secondary is having some fun, the folks up front are getting some push on the quarterback. And Jim Knox, the third member of our broadcast team, has more. Okay, thanks a lot, Bill. I'll tell you what, this Aggie wrecking crew defense right behind me, they are ready to go, and they will definitely be put to the test tonight. And in order for them to be successful, going against that high-flying passing attack, Louisiana Tech, it starts right up there on the defensive line. And we're talking about senior left defensive end, Ty Week. What a heck of a ball game against Virginia Tech. 13 tackles, one block field goal. Key reason why he was named the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Ty Warner said before the game he is ready to go. So is his Aggie raking crew defense. This is going to be fun to watch, guys. Bill? Thank you, Jim. La Tech at 2-2. Two two. The Texas A&M Aggies finish up the non-conference slate. It's coming straight ahead. Welcome back, Louisiana Tech, Texas A&M at Kyle Field, ready to kick it off with the head coach's Jack Bicknell. 2019, in his fourth year last year, La Tech, the WAC champs, and he was the coach of the year in the league. The other side is R.C. Slocum, Josh Kobe kicks it off and out of the end zone, and that is the 15th consecutive kick for Scobie to boot it out of the end zone. That's a weapon that people sometimes don't know how important it can be. One hop it into the stands, Bill. That's, that's an exceptional kickoff. And there is R.C. Slocum in his 14th year and last week's loss to Virginia Tech, the first in his tenure that a non-conference opponent has won here at Kyle Field. They want to get that streak started up on the right side of the ledger this time. And Texas A&M will be led by quarterback Dustin Long, a sophomore from Port Natchez, 6'2", 197 pounds. First to 10 from the 20. Rolls out to throw and is incomplete. Let's take a look at the Texas A&M offense. As we mentioned, Long getting his second start. 
43% completion rate. The three interceptions have been a bit of a problem. They count on Yates and Whitley, the guards, the veterans, to really anchor this group. Farmer needs to run it a little bit better. Taylor's become a heck of a receiver, and Johnson nursing a thigh injury. We'll take a look at the defense of Louisiana Tech in just a moment. Second and 10 at the 20. Farmer met at the line of scrimmage and brought down after a gain of one. Maybe they won't give him that. We'll see about the spot as Curtis Randall made the tackle for Louisiana Tech. And you take a look at that Tech defense, and Quincy Miles is their most consistent up front player and an experienced one at that. Marshall McConaughey is a transfer from Texas, and Randall are the linebackers. And in the secondary, Shepard Johnson and both Johnsons and Brazil. Brazil may be their best cover man. It'll be third down for Texas A&M and 10. No gain on Farmer's play. First series. Long to throw, and it is complete. Just shy of the 30. We he may get a good spot here. Willie Shepard made the tackle that time on Jamar Taylor, his 15th reception of the year. Bill, the offense for Texas A&M is going to be pretty much the same. You can't change a lot in a week. We know that there's going to be a new play caller. Kevin Summon's going to call the plays, and Dino Babers is not going to be doing that duty. Dustin Long comes off the field, one for two on the series, not too bad. But the first throw, we see, you see him there with Dino Babers, the, the quarterback coach now. Uh, didn't deliver that first pass very well, threw it at the receiver's foot. So the Aggies are going to have to punt here on the third and short. Brings on Cody oh, Skates, sure. and they brought him. He got it off in time. Brazil got by one tackler, reversing his field. And Brazil finally stepped out of bounds at the 30-yard line. He ran about 25 yards, maybe about two or three forward is what he ended up getting out of it, but uh, shows you what a slippery character Corey Brazil can be. Junior from West Monroe, Louisiana. And La Tech will come on with their offensive group and the better field position here. First and 10 at the 30. And Luke McCowan, Aggie fans might remember that name. They should. His brother Randy, of course, a part of a championship team here in 98. Got another brother now in the NFL. The offensive line, Bro, Lips, Murph, Gilmore, Laverne, Laverne, and all whack first teamer. Smith, not only their leading rusher, but their second leading pass receiver in the backfield. And on first down, Smith is stuffed by the wrecking crew defense right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. Ty Warren leading the way. And Jim commented about him before the game in that three-man front for Texas A&M. Last week, five tackles for loss for Warren in the Vatek game. Jasmine and Smith join him up front. And the linebackers, Honeycutt with an injury. I don't know how much we'll see of him tonight. Gamble is a leader and Appel and Keel we talked about a moment ago. Davis is an All-American candidate in the secondary. It is second down now and 10 at the 30-yard line. Count out of the shotgun. They come out of the blitz and get him with a sack. Randall Webb. Webb getting the start in place of Honeycutt. And Webb, a sophomore from Mesquite, gets his fifth sack of the year. Well, you come with a safety blitz. You're going to see on the right side here. So here's Appel, who's got two sacks on the season. Randall Webb, no one touches him. He's unabated to the quarterback. Nice play that time. McCown's obviously trying to find an open receiver. Can't do it against this tough Texas A&M defense. Number two in the nation, Bill. His defense is playing superbly. And it is third down now for the Bulldogs. Smith on the draw. And it'll be fourth and long as they'll have to boot it away here. With 12.06 to go here in the first quarter, the Aggie fans, well, they've come to know this here. Three and out a lot for opponents here coming in Kyle Field. His defense plays exceptionally against teams coming in here. And Louisiana Tech, a little short huddle here, maybe a little short kick. Upton is the punter. Now they shift into formation. Texas A&M with Byron Jones, the deep man. Jones fumbled the football, but then fell right on it. And it'll be Aggie football. So the exchange of possessions in Texas A&M 
gets it about the 33 yard line. We'll take a brief timeout. We'll be right back after that 41 yard punt. No score in College Station. Welcome back. Here's where Texas A&M excels. The Wrecking Crew defense has La Tech on its own one yard line. First and ten. Smith looking for out of crease. Found a yard or two before he's run back into the end zone. He's going to be given credit for three yards though. The ball will be marked at the four. A host of tacklers there to greet him. Appel, Jackson Appel among them, the free safety. This guy, a redshirt freshman that Aggie fans just love. Well, Joe Smith obviously is a pretty good tailback in his own right. In this passing game that the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs have, Joe Smith averages 91.8 yards a game. Now, Texas A&M hasn't given 100 yards to a rusher in 16 straight games. Now, that's pretty impressive. Don't know that he'll get that tonight because this record for defense has come to play. Yeah, you got to go back to 2000 and Reggie White of Oklahoma State, the last to get over the 100 yard mark against this wrecking crew defense. McCowan on second down and seven. Almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Brian Gamble. Gamble had six on his mind. The senior linebacker does a nice job of coverage there, just rolling with the quarterback. You can see Brian Gamble here. He's going to work back and come across as Luke McCown comes outside of the pocket. And he's going to take the tight end inside, and he breaks underneath where he does, where he needs to, and watch both hands get on the ball. And Brian, you had a touchdown, my man, and didn't get there. You see Luke McCown's ability getting out of the pocket as he throws the ball, but really not a good decision to throw it back there. Third and seven. All the Aggie fans up here with La Tech backed up on its own four-yard line. McCown from the end zone. Dumps it off to Smith, and he is upended back at the four. Great tackle by Sammy Davis, the senior from Humble, Texas. And now Louisiana Tech and Josh Scobie, whether Dustin Upton, will have to punt it out of their end zone. Well, this is what R.C. Slocum wants. Put your, your defense down there. They're going to do a good job. Three downs. Forced Josh McCown to make a bad throw. He did on the last play, and now they sniff out the screen, and Sammy Davis does a good job of coming up at up end, and Joe Smith, they're going to be punting from the back of their end zone. Upton. Gets it off. Jones, fumbled a moment from the 35, and then slips. Great punt that time by Dustin Upton of 59 yards to get him out of a hole, but once again, good field position for Texas A&M. We'll be right back. Dustin Long comes back on, and the Aggies, even though they have not moved it real well, 16 yards on four rushes tonight, 40 yards total offense. They get better field position each time as they come on for their third possession. And it'll be first to 10 at the 44 of the Aggies. Nine men, 10 men up around the line of scrimmage going to force the Aggies to throw. Long rolling out. And it is caught by Johnson, rocked hard, but then second effort got him to the 44. And it'll be a first down in Louisiana Tech territory. Shepard the tackle. Now we mentioned earlier the coordinators have switched here, but their locations are staying the same, Gary. Well, Kevin Summon's going to be up in the booth. He's the one go ahead and he's going to call the plays. Doing a good job here as he has the bootleg pass with the receiver coming across. Good open field running here and a good job of running after the catch. Pretty good tackle, though, we think by uh, losing a tech, but he runs right through that one. And good job that time by Johnson continuing. So Kevin Summon's upstairs. He's going, going down to Dino Babers on the sideline. He's actually signaled, giving it to the quarterbacks on the sideline, and they'll signal it in from there. First and 10, Long going down to Taylor, caught inside the 15-yard line. Michael Johnson beaten on the play, and Jamar Taylor a circus grab. Good job here, throwing the ball down the field. R.C. Slocum wants to throw the ball against tight coverage. When they come up the line of scrimmage, that's what they're going to do here. Taylor spun around the quarterback, throw it inside. He adjusts to it and makes a nice grab. 29 yards on the play. First and 10, they'll mark it just outside the 15 as you look one more time. And that's two deep zone coverage. Just working to the void of the defense, getting behind the cornerback who's short, and the safety has to expand. Long out of the shotgun. Farmer, the lone back beside him. Here they come on the blitz. He goes right up the middle. And Long, a nice gain down to the seven-yard line before he is brought down. 
Things good. are working very well for the Aggies, Bill. Pretty good job of play call here. Things are working well. Good job on the quarterback draw that time. They're rushing from the outside. Perimeter blitz. Dustin Long comes back and steps up in there for a pretty nice gain. He's going to bring up a second and short. Do we have a penalty? Yeah. I uh, may have a hold against the Aggies. You see Mark Ferris here on the sideline with the baseball Holding cap. on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Next to him is Dino Babers, who just got the call from uh, from Baber. Excuse me, Kevin Summon down to Babers, then off to Mark Ferris. They're signaled in, and he's still the offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach, going to work with him. And I think that staff is just trying to find the, the right combination of things to work with here, Bill. Yeah, and he has been on the sideline in the past, and Summon has been upstairs. So, like you mentioned, the transmission to getting the play in may take just a little bit longer, but Summon is making the calls. First to 20 now. Taylor got it. Touchdown, Aggies. <laughs> 25 yards, and Dustin Long has his first touchdown pass as an Aggie quarterback. Well, when you want your offense to execute, this is what you need to do. Play action pass. Dustin Long does a it's two deep zone coverage. Jamar Taylor is outside. He works up on the safety, does two moves on him, gets him working inside, and goes out for the score. Good job, good execution grab on the football. And the point after by Pegram is good. Todd Pegram, the freshman from Plano, hits the PAT and the Aggies. A touchdown and a reason to celebrate in light of what's been going on recently. Well, this is just great execution. you got good blocking up front. Everything is working well. Play action pass. Make the linebackers come in. The safeties are a little not, not wide enough, and the cornerback can't come over to help. You've only got two deep players there and a cornerback short, and Dustin Long happy about that first toss for the end zone. Texas A&M 7, Louisiana Tech 0. Let's go down to Jim Knox on the sideline. All right, I tell you what, that offense, they are flying high right now. i got to show you this. We can move over here. Dino Babers, now the quarterback coach of the Aggies, talking to Dustin Long. That's a good sign. In fact, when Dustin threw his first touchdown, Dino Babers, the first to meet him, the second guy to meet him, well, that would be Mark Ferris, Bill. Yeah, Mark Ferris and uh, Gary Mitchell would be very supportive. Uh, on and off the field, and not an easy situation for a 27-year-old player. Well, that's impressive, too. He is 27 years old. Mark Ferris has been around a while. He's been on professional baseball teams. He's been on the bus rides. He knows all about what team chemistry means. And for him to support these young quarterbacks and give him, give them all the support. We got Dino Babers, who I think is a pretty good football coach. He's doing a good job with those quarterbacks, and I think it's a pretty bright future here for the Aggies at the quarterback position. Take it to the five as Franklin brings it up across to the 20-yard line, and Eric Franklin is brought down there. And Louisiana Tech will operate first and 10 from its own 19. And you see the scoring drive here, but don't hold your breath because this Louisiana Tech offense can move it up and down the field, folks. They're known for throwing the football, and that's what they do best. Luke McCown hasn't gotten started tonight because the Aggie defense has been so impressive. But expect him to move around out of the pocket and throw the football. Try to get something going against a tough Aggie defense. First and ten Bulldogs. Smith alone back behind McCown. Play action. McCown being chased by Warren. Slipped by him for a couple of yards before he dives out of bounds. Ty Warren pursuing him there. He wanted more than just three or four yards in that play. He had his tight end with the little waggle pass in the flat. He decided to just take it down and run. Hey, I could go ahead and run for three or four instead of toss it that much because good coverage downfield by the Aggies. You're going to see the bootleg pass here, fake to Joe Smith and come around. He's got the tight end right in front of him, but he doesn't want to toss it. He says, no, I can get to there. And good job of making somebody miss and getting four or five here for the Bulldogs. He threw for 407 yards last week, McCowan. But the coaches to say one of the things they like and dislike about him is sometimes he has so much confidence he'll force the ball. He doesn't think there's any situation that he cannot handle. Smith fumbles and recovers it. But here's an example where I think they were glad to see him tuck it and run, see what you get, Gary. Be patient tonight. Well, not don't do anything stupid. Don't throw it up. Actually, the play that was out of the end zone on the last series where he threw the ball and the linebacker, Gamble, almost made the interception. Here we've got a slip screen. You're going to see Gamble go out and cover him here. He's got good job inside lane coverage here, but Joe Smith just kind of misdirects and falls, and then right there almost gets a fumble. Aggie defense dominant tonight. Here's why. These are the national ranking second in total defense 
rushing defense, just 65 yards game that is sixth best of the nation, and allowing 163 through the air. Here's a communication problem here. The noise is so loud, Luke McCown has to call a, a timeout. That's the Aggie faithful at their best here at Kyle Field. McCown calls a timeout. Junior from Jacksonville, Texas. And yeah, the family is here tonight as uh, Luke goes over to visit with Jack Picknell. You know, I think he wants to play well tonight. You know, his brother Randy played here, and the Aggies didn't recruit Josh McCown coming out of, uh, out of school and wound up being going to Louisiana Tech and having a good career there. His older next older brother, Josh, uh, is uh, in the NFL, played at uh, SMU and at Sam Houston State. He's with the Arizona Cardinals, was a drafted quarterback. A lot of heritage there in the, in the quarterback position at the, in the McCown family, and I'm sure they're very proud of all these young men. This guy here, though, he's pretty special in his own right. 6'4", 220 pounds as a quarterback, can move and throw the football very well. Presents a lot of problems, as R.C. Slocum was telling us earlier, as far as his team preparing to face this type of offense. No, definitely, because he can throw it and run the ball as well. For Tonight's game will be totally different. Uh, this team will come in here, and I'm going to guess we'll throw it at least 60, 65 times, and they're very good at throwing it. And they also have a running attack. It's a little misleading. They have an excellent running back, and we'll, we'll keep you honest by running the football, but they're very good at throwing it, and uh, this will be a different challenge and a big challenge for our defense. Well, and defensively, they're going to do a few different things here tonight. You'll see the Aggies in a four-man down front. Normally, they're a 3-4 lineman. They're going to change that up. They'll bring some pressure. They're not going to do one thing all night, but they're going to change it up. Mike Hankwitz, the defense coordinator, he's got to go against different passing teams like Texas Tech in the Big 12. So this is kind of a warm-up for him. Third and 11 from the 18, and it is complete. Norwood on the reception. Chris, a junior from Jackson, Mississippi, tackled by Randall Webb. The Bulldogs will have to kick it away. This is why Texas A&M fans and the coaching staff has so much optimism. Their defense can be so suffocating. If the offense can just be average, Gary, they can have a heck of a team. There's no doubt about it. When you play at the level that this defense is, and Mike Hankwood said, hey, this is probably the best defense we've had here. He thinks they're even better than the 1998 defense, which says a lot. Dustin Upton back in the punt formation now. Jones is deep. Upton from his own 10 barely got it off. Jones, 40, dives near midfield, and Texas A&M will have excellent field position once again as the tackle made by Antonio Crow after a 47-yard punt, a 20-yard return for Byron Jones. Byron Jones, normally a cornerback. Look at Jay had a good game last year in the bowl game at three interceptions, but here returning punch for the Aggies. They look at him here as he makes people miss. That's what you have to do as a punt returner. A lot of shift, a lot of, a lot of jumps there, and doing a good job and a good return. So the Aggies, well, isn't it fun to go on offense when you get the ball at midfield? And every time, they have had better field position. 7-0 on the 25-yard TD pass from Dustin Long to Jamar Taylor, the only score in tonight's game. And on the ground this time, and out of bounds at the 46-yard line, Michael Johnson makes the tackle on Joe Weber, his first carry. Joe is a senior from San Bernardino, California. Yeah, kind of surprised there, big Joe Weber takes it out of bounds. Big guy like that normally takes it upfield and shows pretty good speed getting outside, but I'd like to see my fullback bang it up in there and not run it out of bounds. Weber, just five carries coming in for eight yards and one touchdown. Very highly recruited out of high school, great high school career in California. 335 to go in the period, and it is second down and six from the 46. Weber again slips off one. Cannot handle the other swarm as Louisiana Tech stays after it. Chris Marshall and Michael Johnson making the tackle. Defense for the Bulldogs. They they play with speed, Bill. They like to get a lot of speed on the field. They play with five defensive backs, and they'll have to go with a lot here. They're going to bring a lot of people up to the line of scrimmage to stop this Aggie offense. They've done it on both series here. You see the cutback here by Weber, and watch the pursuit by the Bulldogs. The secondary comes up very well and tackles. That's Michael Johnson from his free safety spot doing a good job there. Yeah, if you have to pin La Tech season on one thing, it's been turnovers. They're minus seven in turnovers for the year, and they have not intercepted a pass yet this season. Texas A&M, on the other hand, is plus seven in the turnover category. Last week, that's what shut down the Bulldogs against Penn State. Pass is completed on third and eight at the 25. This is Taylor 
15 near the 10 yard line as Jamar Taylor run out by Shepard and Johnson. Well, this is a very nice pass by Dustin Long. He's going to throw it right over a linebacker's head and right into the midst of Jamar Taylor, who's got great closing speed and crossing speed across the field. Take a look at Taylor's going to come up and work across the field and watch him throw it right over the linebacker's head. Bingo, good shot. That's what you do. Get in between the secondary and the linebackers and take it across the field. Jamar Taylor showing pretty good speed. 38 yards on the pickup. So the Aggies getting the big play in offense, which has been severely lacking this season. And it's now Texas A&M knocking on the door again. First and goal from the 10 yard line. Two back set long on the look in is incomplete intended for Terrence Thomas. Shepard was covering. Well, Bill, you know, I've you talked about the big plays and what they've been going against is primarily zone coverage. The, the choice of the defense by losing a tech is playing zone coverage. Here's a little man coverage short in the red area. You see Dustin Long's pass just a little bit high and out of the reach there, Terrence Thomas. Thomas, three receptions on the year is long. Comes back to the line for a second down and goal. Long tonight, seven of ten for 128 yards. Had the hot hand with a touchdown here in the first quarter. Weber ducks his head and gets a couple going up the middle. And it'll be a third and goal now for Texas A&M from the seven yard line. Joe Weber last year 117 yards rushing six touchdowns. And his sophomore year 444 yards on the ground and a pair of TDs and also scored one in the receiving end. Another thing for Louisiana Tech defensively they didn't really know how to prepare this game. Two, one thing, the quarterback, you're going to have Dustin Long or Reggie McNeil, and they prepared for both, or, and how the play calling is going to be, so they're just trying to get settled down as well. Play action. Long. Keeping the football. Scores. Flag throw. Going to bring it back, I'm afraid. Appeared to be a hold. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And... I think they got Terrence Murphy here, wide receiver on the near side of the field. Doing a good job of blocking, but he blocked him just too darn long. And Dustin Long's going to try to do a little play action here and find Only somebody in the end offense. zone. Pressure there Big by the defense. The the foul. You're going to see it right Big up here. There's going to be the takedown. It blocks him in the back, and that's what they're going to call. Spins around and continues to block. And Aggie fans aren't going to like that call, but he's blocking him in the back, and that's a penalty. So Dustin Long, who threw his first touchdown pass of his Aggie career earlier, is denied his first rushing touchdown. See a little bit of a forlorn look on his face there. You know, though, if you're going to throw the football, being out of the 15-yard line, it's probably a little bit of an easier pass. You have more choices in your offensive system that you can go with here, so maybe the Aggies have a better chance of throwing it in the end zone from uh, from a 15-yard line. Third and goal from the 15. Long. Looking for Porter, covered on the play by Lee Johnson, a sophomore from Louisville, Texas. I like Porter. I like his routes. He does a good job getting up on the safeties and gets separation. When you can get separation from the safeties, that's when you're going to be able to catch some footballs. Porter's going to be the tight end or in the slot on the left side of the field. Watch him work inside and get away from the safety. Not a lot of speed, but he knows where he's going, and if the ball was on target, I'm sure he'd make that grab. Shows the ways of a veteran, and that means Pegram will come on for the field goal attempt. He's set up at the 22 for a 32-yarder. And it's good. So Texas A&M gets the field goal from Pegram, 32 yards, and the Aggies make it a 10-0 football game. Pegram now three of seven in the field goal category on the year. A whole lot of kissing going on in these stands, Bill. <laughs> Long time tradition here at Texas A&M. The color analyst that you are knew you'd notice the small details. Well, you know, all right, the right in front of me here, there, there's some cuties down there, and they're just uh, give them a little sugar. It's more than what's happening on the field here at College <laughs> State. It is. Tradition here at the atmosphere is just absolutely incredible. Well, I'll what, tell you what, what do you think about this guy, RC? Is he, is he happy about the play call tonight, the production of the offense? I think so far you've got to be pleased with the offensive production here. Justin Moss throwing the ball well. Seven completions out of 11 attempts, 128 yards, the touchdown score. 
not really running the ball a lot, just effectively getting enough done. And now obviously the defense for the for the Aggies just playing superb and the kicking game, punt the ball down there, make them go to a long field. Everything's working well for Texas A&M. There's the drive that didn't take long to get the three on the board. Texas A&M ready to boot it away here. Skates on the kickoff. And the tackle is made at the 25 yard line that time as we send it down to Jim Knox on the sideline. Okay, actually I'm in the stands now, Bill, because you know so many years on the other side of Kyle Phil, we've seen the McCowans, Pat Robin, sit over there watching Randy McCowan, but of course Luke now quarterbacks Louisiana Tech. Robin and Pat, this is an unusual place to be. It feels different over here. It's a different viewpoint, but we're glad to be here. Now, Pat, you look at Luke going against this defense. If I had to pick one defense in the nation not to go against, I think it'd be the wrecking crew. Hadn't had too much luck so far. You're supposed to be pom poming tonight for Louisiana Tech. Uh, you're taking the night off to watch Little Brother? Well, yes, I think the other squad drew for this game, so we go next weekend. Okay, well, you guys, uh, I can say I hope you enjoy the game, but uh, we'll see what happens at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. All right, Jim, stay up there for La Tech's hope. As DJ Curry, the receiver, all we need is put Jim in the La Tech stance. And must have a heck of a T-shirt drawer. We've got a bunch of colors in there to choose from, red and, and, uh, and blue, and you, you pick it. Orange, obviously, Sam Houston State last year. That's really got to be unusual for the McCowans, though, to come here and be sitting among the minority right now. As La Tech, good movement on that last play, though, for 18 yards and a first down to the 44. Smith. Finds a hole, nice job by the offensive line and pulls his way across the 50 near the 49 of Texas A&M before Gerard Penwright made the tackle. Well, that's what's impressive about Joe Smith. He's he's a pretty good runner, but I think between the tackles, he goes north and south. Watch him keep his pad level low. You give him a little hole and he gets through there well, makes one guy miss in the backfield and just keeps going, getting behind the big offensive lineman. And hey, before you know it, he's got seven or eight yards and that's what he got on their first play. Well, and one thing about Louisiana Tech, down 10 nothing as explosive as they can be, this team is not going to panic in this situation. They know they can make up points in a hurry. Second and three from the 49. McCowan got plenty of time and incomplete, nearly picked off. Off the hands of Curry. Jones was there. Penright also near the play. Actually, it was a pretty good play by the Bulldogs. Offensively, they blocked and McCown does a good job of stepping up. Curry's in the slot, working inside, going to find a little opening there and settle down. McCown's going to deliver the ball. He just misses it, just doesn't make the catch. Aggies almost got lucky here with a tip and uh, an interception. Brian Jones trying to give him another. DJ Curry comes in their leading receiver, 18 grabs, and I'm sure he'd be the first to tell you, should have had that. 11 catches last week gets Penn State. Impressive for that young man. So it makes it a third and three for the Bulldogs, down 10 nothing here. With six seconds to go in the period, could be the last play of the quarter. Out of the backfield, and it's complete near the 41-yard line. For Moats has run out of bounds. Now they got what they wanted to match up. Moats of running back out of the backfield on a linebacker. McCown does a good job of rolling outside or throwing the ball outside, and they got the speed mismatch and got the first down. So Moats on the reception. And that ends the first quarter here in Aggieland. Texas A&M with a 10-0 lead. Back to the second period in a moment. Welcome back to Texas A&M as Revley and the core enjoying it so far with the Aggies. A first period lead of 10-0. La Tech though, good field position here as they'll have it on a first and 10 at the 41 of the Bulldogs, or the uh, Aggies, I should say. Play action. McCowan. Incomplete double coverage there intended for Norwood. Jones batted it away. The Blues and Tech coaches talked to us. They talked about Chris Norwood. They like him. He's got some speed, gets down the field. You're going to see him here take it up to the middle of the field. And Quarterback McCown throws it up and over his head, but they like his playmaking ability. They say that he's thrown, made some great catches in practice and he's shown well in the game. McCowan is 5 of 8 for 25 yards. This is a guy that came in throwing 
hitting 60% for 1,229 yards through four games. Slips and falls here, gets up and being thrown back down by Jasmine. Marcus Jasmine. Well, you credit Jared Penwright on the initial rush. He comes from the outside. He's the outside. He's a linebacker, and he's going to come out here and get pressure on the quarterback and force Luke McCown to get up into the pocket. Almost falls down here. Watch Jared on the outside. Almost gets him and makes him turn up, and then going to have a pretty good job there from the inside coming out. Marcus Jasmine giving the sack. 6'4", 317-pound sophomore, the biggest player on the defensive side, and playing to his size this time out of New Orleans and. It is now a third and 14 from the 45. McCown out of the shotgun. Great catch and complete at the 25 yard line. Yeah, there's a flag though, Bill. Yep. The back judge threw it right in the middle of the field and usually that's gonna be coverage on the tight end, but I'm not really sure what they're throwing it here. DJ Curry, the receiver on the play, Pass interference on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Well, that's how you get open sometimes. DJ Curry. That's going to be on the right side of your screen. DJ Curry, number seven, is in the slot. He's going to push off the linebacker here and work to the middle of the field. And I think it was just before that on the play, and the back judge throws it right where he came from. So, well, you can tell one thing. You see how the guy can make a play in traffic and take a hit. Now he went up he went up high for that one. There's numbers here for the season. Pretty productive. Like I said last week, 11 receptions at Penn State. That's 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 impressive. But third and 29 now, and the ball pushed back in Louisiana Tech territory at the 40-yard line. They need to get to the 30. It's at the 31 of AM. Cowan to keep. He's picking up some yards for the punt. He gets out of bounds at the 44 of Louisiana Tech. You know what's scary? Big Jasmine, <laughs> Marcus Jasmine, their nose tackle. 300 pounds. Let's watch Jasmine here as he goes through the whole play. Watch him track down McCown. He's come around on a stunt. This big guy can run. He almost catches McCown from the sideline. Look at the good angle he's taking. Smart oh. young man, too. And if that 300 pounds hits McCown, I don't know what will happen. He was saying, I wish we were in Canada. I'd have got him. That wider field, I'd have nailed him. Great speed, particularly for that size. And the punt, Jones. Fair catches, lost it. Fell on it, though, at the 24-yard line. We'll take a brief timeout. Stay with us. The Aggies of Texas A&M with a 10-0 lead and 13-22 to go in the half. with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Following that penalty, we'll take a break. 10 nothing Aggies. Jack Bignell talking to the official. Got a feeling I know what he's talking about, Gary. Not happy about that halo rule violation. This is a rule that I think needs to be reevaluated and thrown out of college football. Fair catcher, watch a young man come in. He stops, backs up. There's no one there within two yards of that young man, and yet they throw a penalty and didn't really make a big deal here. It's five-yard penalty on the play, but obviously something that if you made a big play, they'd have to give it back to him. Long comes out throwing, and it's complete across the 40 to the 45-yard line as Keith Joseph, the receiver, Randall and Johnson, Lee Johnson in on the tackle. Keith Joseph, his second reception of the season. Yeah, just leak your fullback out into the flat on the play action here. Boot pass, toss it to him quick. You got your tight end coming up on the second level. No one accounts for Joseph out of the backfield. Makes a nice grab and Long throws it in there. And Long is now for the night 8 of 12, 137 yards and a touchdown. Long coming in. 3 of 12 for 45 against. Louisiana Lafayette, 9 of 18 for 119 against Pitt, and then 111 against Vatek last week. The handoff here, nothing doing for Derek Farmer on the first to 10. The third one, they got nine on that other pickup. And now Jamel Cage making the tackle on that play. 12-20 accounting here in the first half. Texas A&M 
third down and four to go from the 41. I think they've got to be very pleased with Dustin Long and throwing the football. I like what they're doing with him, though, Bill. Not making him stay in the pocket and throw the ball. They're rolling him out, rolling him out, giving him a chance to look down the field, and he throws the ball pretty well on the move. Give you a couple of scores to chew on here in just a moment. It is third and fourth, the 41 for the Aggies. Long. To Johnson slipped away and then knocked out of bounds, but a first down, Texas A&M at the 44. Let's see where they mark the football. No doubt about the first down, though, as Bethel Johnson on the reception, Marshall and Wisham making the stop. Well, a question about his thigh bruise, I think that answers it right here. Watch him catch the ball and explode after the catch and the speed. He outruns the secondary. Boom, got the second burst and gets around the corner. A little more room there, and Bethel Johnson may take that down to the house. Good job by the Aggies offense, picking up inside. Joe Weber, excuse me, Farmer blocking inside. First and 10, ball marked at the 49-yard line of Louisiana Tech. And again, the reverse, and Johnson looking for a hole, picked up about five. They're going to mark it at the 45-yard line. Shepard makes the tackle. Well, Gary, earlier today, Iowa State up at Nebraska 36 to 14 as you take a look at Johnson again. Second time we've seen this tonight. Well, that was a big play. There's some big plays here. And this time, Jamar Taylor doesn't hold on the outside. They caught him last time. He came off of number 20 who actually made the play and blocked somebody else and trying to give you a little breather there. Good job running the last couple of plays. But what a huge win for Iowa State today. 36-14 over Nebraska. Texas blank Tulane 49-0. Tonight, Tulsa is leading Kansas. 13-0 in the first quarter. This is a Tulsa team, Louisiana Tech beat 53-9 and hadn't won in just about a year. Flags are thrown. AM called timeout, timeout prior to the snap. First charge timeout of the half. You talk about those wins, Bill, and you know, just you knew before the season what was going to happen in the Big 12. And people say, no, that's not going to happen. You got Colorado, they lose early. Nebraska, they've lost a couple, and you, you're surprised that the Big Red Machine is not doing very well. Well, obviously, they've got some, some issues and problems of their own. And here at Texas A&M, you know what the, change, the play calling change here? You got Dino Babers not calling the plays, but still working with the quarterbacks, as you see him there on the sideline. Kevin Sumlin is now upstairs calling the plays here. A lot of things are changing. People are finding ways to win. I, I yeah. credit Dan McCarney at Iowa State. Heck of a football coach, and I think he's got his players believing in themselves and, and being able to win football games. Yeah, and what's interesting here, this uh, Big 12 action gets going in earnest next week. A&M hosting Texas Tech in what ought to just be a terrific battle. Tech, uh, if you didn't catch it, blowing away New Mexico last night, 49-0 in Albuquerque. They had the wild one against NC State that they lost in overtime. And you look at the A&M schedule, Tech, and then on the road, Baylor, Kansas, they've got a chance with a home game against Tech and a win there to get some real momentum before they host Nebraska. So all is not dark and gloomy here in College Station, even though last week it may have seemed that way. When I know the defensive side of the football, the, the Aggies are happy they're actually playing Louisiana Tech because it gives them preparation for a team that throws the ball real well and doing real well. That's Texas Tech, who they see next week. Second and six at the 45 for Texas A&M, up 10-0. Hand off Farmer. Farmer. Good second with their surge as he gets down near the 40-yard line before Jamel Cage makes the tackle. This is what I like about Derek Farmer when he runs inside. He's a good runner inside. Go straight ahead. Don't make anybody miss and go into the hole. A lot of times I've seen him on tape where he makes a juke right back there five yards behind the line of scrimmage. He doesn't get to the hole because the hole closes up. But if he runs straight ahead like that, he's going to be more productive, and I think the Aggie coaches would agree. There's Farmer's work so far tonight. Third and one, the ball at the 40 of Louisiana Tech. Long, hands it off to Farmer. Got the one and a few more as he spins his way to the 36-yard line. That'll move the chains with 10-11 to go here in the period. Jerome Wallace and Lee Johnson, the tacklers. A lot of mystery goes out of play calling when you have production, when your players block, when your players run, when they execute. Things look well offensively. The Aggies are doing everything they need to to move the chains, get first downs on the ground, make passes, throwing the ball. Dustin Long is effective throwing the ball. The Aggie offense seems to be in sync here. You see the big offensive line. Billy Yates on the left side, Taylor Whitley on the right side, doing a good job of the guard spots. And they've got Ruber at tackle and Hangartner at center. So their offensive line is, is, is pretty solid right now. And Jamie Hightower, 
Started last six games as a freshman, starting at the left tackle spot. First and 10 at the 36, long. Incomplete as Shepard was covering Murphy on the play. Yeah, a little too much air into that ball. Just throw it down there, let him run underneath it, trying to throw it up there so Murphy can adjust to it, but the ball just kind of hung up. Just a five-step drop here, look, throw it outside and throw it up. The angle, the arc of the ball is what got him there. The ball slowed down, and if he'd have thrown it out front, we could have led the receiver. I think he might have had a better opportunity to catch the football. I'd be impressed overall, though, with Long's second career start, Gary. He's been very impressive. Well, if you can make that kind of improvement from week one to week two in your starts, that's good. Uh, that's exactly what the coaches want here. I think we will see Reggie McNeil at the quarterback spot as long as uh, uh, things go well, though, here. That may not happen. Got a man wide open here on a second down and 10 at the 30-yard line. And catching the football, Keith Joseph, before Shepard is there to tackle him. And Keith likes that play. Twice now he's come out of the backfield in the eye back position, fullback spot, and caught a pass. And a sophomore from Houston. A couple other quick scores that are of interest. Tennessee got humbled by Florida last week. Vols are losing to Rutgers, 14-7. That one's uh, early second quarter. And earlier today, Penn State loses in overtime at home to Iowa, 42-35. And a wild one where the Lions came back to get it the extra session and then couldn't finish off the Hawkeyes. Right here, it is third and three from the 24. And the look-in is knocked away. No flag intended on the play for Murphy. And Brazil was covered. Corey Brazil from West Monroe, Louisiana. Well, this is something that a quarterback has to do. Dustin Long comes to the line of scrimmage, and he reads that they're going to blitz. And so he checks to the outside. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage there. You see it? You see the mark there? He knows he's going to read it. you got the blitz coming from the outside here, and he releases the timing. Just good job there by the defender of making the play. Otherwise, it might be a big play for the Aggies. But well, that's what Dustin Long has to do as a quarterback to mature and make the right decision when he gets a line of scrimmage. That'll bring Pegram on for the field goal attempt as they're going to set up here for a 46-yarder. Hit one earlier from 32. This one is long enough but off the mark, and it will stay at 10-0 on the missed attempt by Todd Pegram. 8.47 to go, 10-0 Texas A&M. We'll be back. East Locum sees the Aggies up 10-0 here. Second quarter, 8.47 to go. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and Jim Knox with you. And Fox Sports Net. Aggies do not connect on the field goal attempt. And as a result, the ball comes out to the line of scrimmage. It'll be first and 10 at the 29 for... Tech Bulldogs. Harris in motion. They fake to him as Smith gets it on the full head play, and nobody fooled on that on that wrecking crew. David Ross, a redshirt freshman from Forney, Texas, makes the initial hit. David wasn't fooled, came up on the outside of the right defensive end spot, and makes a nice play in the backfield. You're going to see him come up right here and bingo right there on Joe Smith. Offense releases and come right down the line of scrimmage and Got you. That's what you're supposed to do. I like that. Big defensive ends come down the field and make tackles. Well, Texas A&M has held Louisiana Tech to just 33 yards of offense here midway through the second period. Second and 11. The count on the shotgun. The quick release to Norwood dropped the football. Incomplete. Yeah, smart quarterback, though. You see McCown, he knows he's got corner blitz coming from that side. You see the corner sneaking in. Okay, no problem. I just throw it right over your head and deliver it to my receiver. Unfortunately, the throw was good. Reception, poor. McCown's going to see the blitz to his right side. One, two, three, throw it right over. You see the Aggie jumping and just did not make the grab. Third and 11 on the 28 of Louisiana Tech. Cowan, lonesome in the backfield. Keeping it now on Lourdes and got it to Norwood across the 50 and a first down as he is stopped at the 45 of AM by Jackson Appel. Some quarterbacks roll and run to run. He rolls and runs to throw. Kind of makes sense there. It kind of surprised me here. I thought he was actually going to pull that ball down and run it. As he comes out of the pocket, watch his body posture. McCown, he's going to come up. He got pressure here from the outside. He steps up in. He tucks the ball like he's going to run and wait for the Aggie to come forward and throws it behind him. 
Good job in executing. Yeah, he really sold that well. And it's a first down. The pitch to Joe Smith. Smith pulls forward near the 43 yard line. And Jasmine makes the tackle there. Well, Louisiana Tech, as we're telling you, don't count this bunch out. As last year, they were picked to finish ninth in the Western Athletic Conference. And remember all the buildup for Fresno State last year and how they had those big non conference wins? Well, La Tech ended up being the league champion at going 7 and 1. And this year, with their backbreaker scheduled games at Clemson and Penn State and the win over Oklahoma State, they're moving it well here. Incomplete intended for Franklin on the second down and eight. Yeah, Aggies going, rushing three rushers, two linebackers, and six defensive backs behind them. Selling out for the coverage here, thinking their three defensive linemen can get enough pressure on the quarterback. They're rolling a lot of people in the defensive front here for the Aggies, Bill. They want to put a lot of pressure on this quarterback. I know from previous defensive experience, when you rush the quarterback, it's a tiring effort, and so they want to keep fresh people in there, and that's what the Aggies are doing. Ten guys the line of scrimmage. He's been audible. Third and eight. McCowan. Incomplete again. And in a crowd that time, Appel was there to cover. Good job of swarming to the football by the defense of Texas A&M. Sniffed out the screen and do a good job. And hey, here, McCown thinks he's got the play here. He sees Blitz coming here, but no, the Aggies back out of it. And they're going to run. They're going to read the screen. You see him checking to the screen outside. All right, crowd wants to get in, in there, and Joe's coming across, and Maggie's just making a nice play here. Upton, who's averaging 44 and a half yards per punt, kicks it away, and it is caught inside the 15-yard line. And Texas A&M will take over there as Jones on the fair catch, 29 yards on the punt. Texas A&M ball when we come back. Texas A&M with a 10-0 lead over the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Bill Lamb, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox with you. As the Aggies will resume play with 6.51 to go in the third, the second period. We'll have it first and 10 from the A&M 14. Dustin Long, 10 of 16 for 154 yards and one touchdown brings him out. Weber. Looking for a hole. Good pursuit that time defensively. Marshall McConaughey there for Louisiana Tech. And Joe Weber is brought to a hole. McConaughey, the senior middle linebacker, doing a good job of scraping the outside. Making a nice tackle on Weber. His Bulldog bunch, they've got to make this Aggie offense shut down on first and second down. Try to make a play on third down. That's how most teams have approached the Texas A&M offense. Keep them in uh, third and long situations. If you can play well first and second down, and that's more to the point of what R.C. Slocum was talking about on play calling. Let's open it up on first and second down so we're not in those third and long situations. Yeah, it's an Aggie team, 286 yards total offense, 11th in the Big 12. This one is complete to Porter across the 25-yard line, brought down by Lee Johnson. And that'll move the chains again for Texas A&M. Well, this is a good scouting report. Good job of recognizing the defense and getting Porter. This is three times now he's run, run outside of the open area of the defense. He's a tight end on the left side of the screen, and Dustin Long has good protection. He just delivers a strike to his big tight end who's working out behind the cornerback and outside of the safety. That's a void area when you have two deep zone coverage. Gary, you mentioned earlier, he runs good routes and just a, a great weapon for Texas A&M and a smart, savvy player that can help a young quarterback look pretty good in a hurry. First and 10 at the 25, you look at Long's numbers for the night. Tripped up his Weber, ran into his own man. I think he fell into Jeff Hangartner, who was pulling to block. Yeah, he got cut up in Jeff's legs here, number 66 here. The center's just gonna come pull around, it's kind of strange. Push back and Pops into the running back, and Big Joe just couldn't get around him. And a loss on the play. Second and 13, the ball on the 23-yard line now for Texas A&M. One to 
once they do that, that's kind Black of a, a given that you're going to get an offside penalty on the defense. This is something the teams practice, Bill. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that more don't execute it more often. Yeah, when you get here, and that's something you've got to make automatic in your offense. If you can steal five yards, do it. Well, big difference here for AM. Second and eight instead of 13. And the ball at the 27 yard line now for Texas AM. The draw play. Weber nearly blew over the official and then rolls to the 45 yard line and more. First down, Aggies. Weber picks up 18 on the carry. Now, if you're going to run the draw play, this is how you need to block. Everyone is going to commit to the right side. Watch everyone on the defense comes over to this side, and Joe Weber's going to read it out the back door. Watch what I'm talking about here. Weber sees daylight back here. That's where he's going to take he's got a great block on the outside. Number nine, Bethel Johnson, just taking the cornerback out of the picture. And good job by Weber reading the open area and getting a big play for the Aggies. Aggies now first to 10 at their own 45. Play action, long. Lofts it. Complete at the 25 yard line. Oshler Fleming comes up with the reception. Marshall makes the play, and Fleming, a junior from Denton Ryan High School. Well, he threw a touchdown pass a year ago to Mark Ferris, and now he's catching the ball out in the open field. and. Hey, Dustin Long does a good job of getting the ball out there. If he could throw it out in front of him a little bit more, I think he'd take it in for the score. And sets the Aggies knocking on the door, first and 10 at the 25. Weber banged up the middle and hit hard at the 25-yard line. No gain. It'll be second down and 10. Chris Marshall making the tackle this time. Now the yards get tougher here. Whenever you get down close to that scoring area, defenses tend to pick up the pace a little bit, and they're going to stuff the run. And when you run inside the tackles, this Louisiana Tech defense, not a bad bunch. They, they come in, they'll put three down, four down, and those linebackers step up and fill the holes as you see Marshall making a play there. Yeah, Louisiana Tech giving up 31-plus a game point-wise, but the turnovers have put this defense in some very difficult positions, and that figure can be a little bit misleading. Second and 10 from the 25 and long to throw it again. Taylor off his fingertips as he just couldn't quite come up with it. Yeah, but he had a wide open Terrence Murphy in the corner of the end zone. <laughs> Threw that ball pretty quick to the outside. I don't think he stayed with the, the read progression there. If he'd have read it down in the middle side, he might have had a, a score unabated. Dustin Long, sophomore from Port Natchez, Texas. Great high school career there with 3,130 yards and 28 touchdown passes in his senior year. Second start at Texas A&M. He's facing a third and 10 here at the 25. Quarterback keeper. 15-10. And first and goal, Aggies. Dustin Long. Johnson and Brazil, the tacklers. A lot of people talk about Reggie McNeil, the young freshman quarterback, as being a phenom run of the football. But I tell you, there's nothing wrong with Dustin Long's wheels. Does a good job here on the quarterback draw, well executed by the Aggies. Gets inside and just runs to daylight, sets up a couple of blocks, and does a nice job of getting down to the six-yard line. That's very, very good running from the quarterback position. 19 yards, first and goal from the six. Murphy wide left, Taylor wide right. Weber, the ball carrier, and he'll stroll into the end zone. Touchdown, AM. and yes. Joe Weber gets his second touchdown of the season on a six-yard run. Well, just close everybody down here. The left side, Billy Yates just cleans house. Look at Big Billy, number 72, unabated. Weber walks into the end zone for the score. And now Pegram will come on for the point after. Slight hesitation. Now they'll set things up here with 2.31 to go in the second period. Texas A&M trying to make it 17 nothing. Snap good, kick good as Pegram 
Fits the PAT. He is 8 of 8 on the season. And Texas A&M bumps it to 17-0 over Louisiana Tech. 86 yards on the drive, Bill. Good job, good effort by the Aggies. Watch the left guard. Here we go, Big Billy Bates, number 72, clean in house. Everybody cuts back, and that's the way you want to. That's the way you draw it up, and that's a pretty good score and a good effort by that Aggie offense. Nine plays, 86 yards, and four minutes 20 seconds off the clock, and the Aggies very impressive on that run, and even the armchair quarterbacks at home. Probably couldn't call every one of those plays. <laughs> no questions there. Those are good yeah. plays. Those are good selections by the by Kevin Summer, who's calling the plays upstairs, and looks like everything is working well. Communication-wise, going down to Dino Babers, then to Mark Fair, signaling the play in. Kevin was telling us, what, it was four years ago at Minnesota, he was kind of thrown into a situation like this. Very similar, very unique situation, that same thing. He was working at uh, the University of Minnesota as a position coach and asked to, to call the plays in that game. So this situation is not new to him, but it's very new to A&M fans. Texas A&M to kick it off. Skates rolls by Franklin into the end zone and they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Let's go down to Jim Knox on the sideline. Jim. Okay, thanks, Bill. I had a chance to talk to Luke McCown before the game, the La Tech quarterback. And as you and Gary were talking about earlier, yes, he wanted to come to Texas A&M a few years ago, but he said the Aggies had two quarterbacks on their list, Chance Mock, who went to the University of Texas, backing up Chris Sims, and Dustin Long. They got their man in Dustin Long, and right now Dustin Long doing a nice job tonight, guys. Also, I talked to Luke. He said Randy, who's in the stadium today, up in the stands, did give him a few pointers against his wrecking crew defense. So far, though, it's not working out. Yeah, tell Randy to check his info. <laughs> well, I think Randy's selling out. Yeah, that's right. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't get Once an Aggie, Aggie, always an Aggie. That's exactly right. <laughs> he completes this one to Franklin, and Smith makes the tackle. It'll be a pickup of six, second down and four at the 26 now. Eric Franklin, a junior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. McCown to Curry. Scrambles out of bounds to get the first down. Yeah, just past the 30-yard line. Well, you see the no-huddle offense here. This is a two-minute situation here for this Louisiana Tech offense. But really, they've been doing this kind of a, a play-calling selection throughout the entire year, Bill. In their earlier games, they've gone no-huddle. It allows, it doesn't allow the defense to make substitutions. You know, they're moving the ball here effectively. They haven't done this throughout the first half. Then they come back in the second half and try to run a lot more. Get back in this football game. Yeah, they need to do something to change up the tempo to try to do a uh, this uh, wrecking crew defense. First to ten, McCowan trying to buy time on the rollout and incomplete. Clock stops with 148 remaining in the half. Not a lot of rush here by the Aggies. Those big guys are getting tired chasing that quarterback and. Good job here by the Louisiana Tech offense. Watch the protection here. They're only going to rush three. Going to get up there and try to put pressure on the quarterback. And have sell out here on the coverage, and they do a good job. The Aggies are covered well, cover everyone well back there. There's nowhere to throw the ball into. McCowan, just five of 18 for 63 yards, so he has really been controlled so far. Second and ten, and Luke in trouble. Got bumped, got it off to Smith. 35, leans, needed to get to just past the 40, so. They'll have to punt it away here with 136 to go and Penwright in on the stop for Texas A&M. Well, there you go, third and long, but uh, gonna go ahead and blitz the quarterback here. They're gonna bring five that time, and Luke McCown gets the ball, gets rid of the ball just in time as he's getting hit. Yeah, I beg your pardon. I said it was fourth, but it's still third down now, and third down the 37-yard line. McCowan got the first down and more 50 45 watch out what speed 20 15 Luke McCowan showed some real wheels Jackson Appel saved the touchdown I think it's Keel that might have saved the touchdown a big Keel. safety he tracked him down but McCown my goodness 6'5 220 pounds watch this folks Quarterback not necessarily known for his running ability, but he shreds his Texas A&M defense, goes right through the heart of it here, down the middle of the field, and McCown goes 53 yards down to the inside the Aggies 10-yard line. Good effort that time by Keel, tracking him down and making a play. Just a shoestring here, otherwise he's going to go in the score. 
53 yards on the play, and now first and goal, and a timeout is called. I, want, I wonder if Randy ever ran one in here like that. Oh, tell you what, very impressive against a very fast defense. That is, that AM defense is fast, and Mike Hankwood's talked about being one of the fastest defenses he's been around, and when you have a quarterback break into the open like that, He's thinking, hey, one of our guys is going to step up there and make a play, but they're all in coverage, Bill. And that's the thing. They were in man coverage on that play. The safeties had come up and pressured so that he had the open field and took advantage of it and almost made a almost made a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Well, as you see Jack Picknell with the ball cap and the headset there, he told us that they wanted McCown to run a little bit more and they don't want to turn him into a runner, but he has made some decisions tonight that have taken him in the right direction. And that one, obviously, where he just tucked it under and took off. And they got to feel pretty good if they punch in a touchdown here to be within 10 at the half. He's a good athlete. Yeah. You know, he is a you know, basketball player. He loves basketball. They call it, you know, his best, his favorite thing to do is go out there and dunk basketballs. He says he'll go one-on-one -on -one dunk contest with anybody. That's how confident he is in his ability. Well, he's thrown for over 7,500 yards in his career. He's number three on the Louisiana Tech career list. And at that place, that's saying something. First and goal from the 10 for the Bulldogs. McCowan out of the shotgun to throw it again. Incomplete intended for Curry. Trying to make a play to the outside. Curry's his big play, man. Josh McCown trying to throw it out there. More about this man I'm really impressed with. And every week he on his wrist, man, he, he writes a scripture. He's a very, very devout religious individual and stays with his faith. And, I think he brings that, echoes that, that commitment to his football team and a true leader out there for him, Bill. Well, no putting this guy. 407 yards against Penn State, through for 418 and three touchdowns and a win over Oklahoma State. Second and goal from the 10. Keeps it again. Ankle grabbed and tackled by Marcus Jasmine around the eight yard line and a timeout called. Marcus Jasmine has to change gears that time. Quarterback draw, you're, gonna, you're thinking rush, rush, rush here. They've thrown the slip screen with Joe Smith out there, motion out of the backfield a couple of times tonight. And you see Joe Smith moving out here. But watch Jasmine just going to tag up right here and wait for the quarterback. Go ahead and change gears, throw him away, get Murph out of the way, and make a good tackle on McCown. Otherwise, it might be a touchdown. Louisiana Tech with one timeout remaining here, Gary, and 36 seconds to go. So they still have the full gamut of plays offensively on a third and goal from the eight. Yeah, just running out of downs. They have to throw it into the end zone here for this one. They're going to kick a field goal. Texas A&M and that defense only allowing 10.7 per game, fifth in the nation. Beating Pittsburgh 14-12 and University of Louisiana Lafayette 31-7 in the opener. And last week fell to Virginia Tech 13-3. And only one big play given up for the Virginia Tech touchdown in that game. All right, we'll see what McCowan comes up with. Nine of 17 for 69 yards. Third and goal from the eight. Smith in the backfield to his left. Incomplete. I believe it went right off the hands of Gamble. Number 17, and then Byron Jones was covering on the receiver. I think Gamble had a clear shot at it. Well, Gamble does a good job here, selling down in the middle of the end zone, and I like the way they're being coached. These defensive players, there's no need to go to the back of the end zone. Go ahead and make them throw it over you, which is what Gamble does. He gets in the lane for the quarterback to throw to the back of the end zone. They're going to go for the field goal here. Pauzy is the holder, 25-yarder, and it is good. So Josh Scobie hits the field goal, and that takes care of the shutout. He is now 8 of 10 in field goals. He's got a great leg. The 25-yarder makes it 17 to 3. Well, that's a confidence builder for Louisiana Tech. Down 17 points here late in the second quarter. Go down the field, put three points on the board, and Jack Bicknell takes his troops. You know, going to make a decision here of how to kick off, but obviously going to take his troops in there and say, hey, guys, if we continue to play like that, move the ball effectively, we can put points on the board. Hey, he knows it's going to be tough to get in the end zone, but every now and then one of your good players is going to step up and make a play, and perhaps that will happen. Very impressive time on that drive, Bill. Obviously the big play, Luke McCown and his sprinting ability uh, streaking down the middle of the field. 
Now the 53 yard run certainly set that one up. I want to remind you you'll see the Aggie band at halftime hang with us for that. One of the great shows in all of college football. Nine plays 72 yards for Jack McNell's club that stalled with the field goal. He picks up three. You know, I asked Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, if if Luke McCown is one of those quarterbacks that who has the running ability that you need to spy, put a spy technique on, and he told us no. He says, no, we don't think that he's the, the runner type of quarterback. Perhaps that assessment changes at halftime. Yeah. Certainly there'll be some discussion as to uh, that particular play. All right, let's see if Scobie, who's hit 15 straight that have not been returned, can do it this time. Kicks it short. Picked up on the 20. Weber out to the 35 yard line as he leads through the 36. And with 21 seconds remaining. I don't know why they make that kick like that. You've got a weapon, kick it out of the end zone, line them up with the 20. Now they're lined up with the 35. If a &M wants to do so, they can throw the ball down the field and perhaps get in scoring at least field goal range here. And we'll know how RC is going to play it up 17 to 3. I would agree with the AM also has two timeouts remaining. Louisiana Tech with one, so we'll see what they come up with as Long brings them out. Now they're in high backfield. I doubt they're going to throw the ball down the field unless it's play action pass. The handoff to Keith Joseph Number 34, Keith to the 38 yard line, and AM will be content to take it into the house up by two touchdowns at the break. That'll be the final play. Fine first half for Dustin Long in the Aggie offense as Long throws for 196 yards, completing 12 of 19. And Texas A&M has kept Louisiana Tech well under control as well. Let's go down now to Jim Knox with head coach R.C. Slocum. All right, thank you very much, Bill. R.C., you got to be extremely pleased. Wrecking crew defense, nice job. Only one big play right there towards the end of the first half. Offense right now, total of 261 yards through there, 196. Well, we felt like there in the early going, we were our own worst enemy. We had some other opportunities. We had some untimely penalties and mistakes on our part. Uh, I think the offense is, uh, I like the intensity. Our defense is playing great. Uh, let them, let the quarterback scramble has a nice job on his part. We've got to do a better job of being aware of where he is. And uh, he hurt us a couple of times on the scrambles. But just like to keep playing like we're doing and pick it up and be a little more opportunistic on offense. Look around, see if we maybe run a little bit better. But if we can't, we'll just throw. There we go. All right, RC, appreciate the time. Best of luck in the second half. Aggies lead it at halftime over Louisiana Tech, 17 to 3. Up next, the fight in Aggie Band. Stay with us. Welcome back to Texas A&M. Aggie fans not going anywhere, enjoying a halftime lead of 17 to 3. And let's take a look at the numbers inside the numbers as 268 has really got to please Texas A&M. They only average 286 for the game. That's amazing. 268 yards in the first half. This offense has come out to play, and they've executed very well, as I mentioned earlier. Good job there holding on to the football 16 minutes. And third down's pretty good there, A&M, 50%. Louisiana Tech needs to continue to do what they've done at the end of the second quarter, stay in this football game. Luke McCown really held to not very effective passing the balls, only completed uh, 9 of 18 for 69 yards of his own. So uh, just kind of a tough night for him. He's used to throwing the ball a lot more effectively and down the field more, making more plays with their offense. So we're going to have to make some adjustments, come out and try to find something that will work against the real potent Aggie defense. Well, and Gary, for Texas A&M, that nine-play, 86-yard TD drive that required 420 in the second quarter, season high for plays, yards, and time. And that's something that really has to please everybody in the offensive staff. Well, as you get closer to a conference play and bigger games, more important, importantly is you want to be able to put your offense out there and establish that you can move the football. You can take the ball down the field and, and have a drive, and R.C. Slocum wants that for his football team. You can't roll your defense out there and expect them to go three downs and out every time. Although he's got a great one, and Mike Hankwitz runs that defense very well. He wants his offense to be productive, and I think he's got to be pleased with his offensive production so far tonight. Texas A&M to kick it off with Cody Skates, the junior from Tyler. Moats and Franklin are deep. Moats and Franklin tells him to stay right there, partner, and he does. And the touchback will make it first and ten at the 20 for Texas, or for Louisiana Tech here to start the second half. The 
young and old Aggie fans here tonight and enjoying the performance so far as AM ranked number 24 in the country and trying to get its third win. And let's see what McCowan comes up with. 69 yards passing. Almost as much of that running, Bill. 53 yeah. yards on the one scamper. And got a fellow that's been averaging 309 yards per game passing. Play action and then rolls out on the near side and completes it to Curry. And Curry just shy of the first down at the 29 and a half. And Ty Warren was putting the pressure on McCown, but he finds DJ Curry, the junior from Spring Hill, Louisiana. Well, watch on the outside here. Sammy Davis, number 22, actually has coverage on the crosser, first of all, but he kind of lets him go, and Curry just keeps working to the outside. You see Davis, who let him go and went inside, and Curry should have stepped up for the first down. He's just about a foot short. Second down and one at the 29. Less than a yard, officially. Whistle stopped the play as Smith was banged going into the line. We're gonna have a false start here by the Bulldog offense. The left side of the line got moving. Kurt, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, remains second down. Well, that's, that's a penalty that Jack Bignell is gonna say, hey, we come out, we get a good play on first down. We're a foot from a first down and now we gotta go back five yards. So now we've got a second and medium play here that it makes it a lot difficult for Conroy Hines, who's the offense corner for Louisiana Tech to make a play that's gonna work. And they're trying to signal plays in to get something to go here. But you can't do that against a real good defense. The Aggies, number two in the nation, total defense. You cannot make those kind of penalties. Fourth penalty on La Tech, and each team with three in the first half. So second and six changes things. Norwood try to come back in, and he has stopped shy. He's at the 26-yard line. Jared Morris met him there, and another flag is thrown. Now, I'm not sure what that might be holding or had an offensive lineman come out to the outside as Norwood takes the wide receiver screen. After the play had ended, personal foul on the offense. Half the distance to the goal line, brings up third down. Well, that has really got to frustrate Coach Bignell. You, you come out, you got a second and one on a nice pass play to start things, and then you pick up back-to-back -back penalties and the personal foul, just an excuse him. Well, you're going to put the ball down to the 29 and a half yard line with one foot to go for a first. Now you're going to line up at the 13 yard line. You're going the wrong way, coach. <laughs> he doesn't like that. And Luke McCown, the quarterback, he's doing everything he can. It's just little mistakes across the board. It's a team effort. They all have to get together and get on the same page and, and be progressive and be productive. Third and 17 now. The ball on the 13 yard line. McCown. Zone five. Franklin. Across the 20 to the 23 yard line, and they'll have to kick it away. It does give their kicker, Dustin Upton, who is from Longview, Texas, a little bit of room to kick it. Everett Smith made the tackle that time. Byron Jones will go deep for Texas AM, and Dustin Upton comes on to punt the football. Aaron Jones has been impressive a couple of times touching the ball tonight as a punt returner. Let's see how well he does on this one. Averaging nine yards per return in tonight's game. Aggies fall into each other. Better get away from it now as they do. And it'll be down at the 35 yard line. That was pretty lucky. Almost yeah. a big play there for the Bulldogs. 17 3 with a timeout called after a 42 yard punt. Justin Long starts the second half after a fine first half tonight where he completed 12 of 19 for 196 yards. And the Aggies get good field position again, Gary, as they have it first and 10 at the 35. Weber, the fullback in front of Farmer. Quick drop, incomplete. Intended that time for Bethel Johnson. And Brazil was covering on the play. And Dustin Long, go ahead and check, checking at the line of scrimmage, just walking out, talking to his receiver. They've got a little miscommunication there. Johnson had two grabs for 22 yards in the first half. Leading receiver was Jamar Taylor, four for 100, including the 38-yard touchdown or the the touchdown grab of 25. He also had a 38-yarder. 
There's Long's work. The running game that Coach Locum said he liked to pick up. 25 yards for Weber, 21 for Long. Long sets up, batted away. Up front, Carlin Thomas, the defensive end, senior from Faraday, Louisiana, got it on it. And when you run that naked bootleg pass, you're trying to influence the defensive end to come up the field and go across and take the fake, but he doesn't do that. He doesn't go inside, actually misses a block. The fullback trying to chip him goes up, makes a nice play. Carlin Thomas, good size, 6'3", 238-pound senior. He was a linebacker last year, Bill. He has to play defensive end for the Bulldogs this year, and that's a makes, makes a nice play. And coach is just telling us uh, Rick Smith and Randy Bates, the co-defensive coordinators, they just like him to react a little bit, not think quite as much, and just go play. Made a nice play on that one. Play clock winding down on third and ten, and Long gets this one batted away and nearly picked off by Thomas, who almost caught the deflection. That would have been a strange play, and also six points. A well, good series at time for Louisiana Tech. It's what you need to do. Come out, shut this offense down. Go ahead and bull rush. Bull rush right into his face. Watch him get his hand up there. Quincy good. Miles. Yeah, that's big Quincy Miles. He's 6'3", 307 pounder. The guy pushing inside. What you need to do and make a big play. And Carlin Thomas on the other side almost takes it, makes the interception. Senior out of Shreveport made the play. Skates punts it away. And... Tackled back on the eight-yard line is Corey Brazil. He never singled fair catch at Texas A&M. Makes the play, Singleton, and a 57-yard punt. Texas A&M pinning him deep here. La Tech trailing by 14. Three, Texas A&M, third quarter action. Let's take you back, oh, a few years. How about 1939, the Aggie National Championship team they defeated Tulane in the Sugar Bowl. This is action from that game. 14-13 the final. The Ags win 11-0 under coach H.H. And a national title. How it's changed? Well, they beat Oklahoma A&M that year. Centenary, Santa Clara, Villanova before the Southwest Conference slate. Hey, a little razzle-dazzle there. What do you yeah. think? Toss it down with a hitch pass. They Toss it back to the tailback and go into the end zone. They were honored here for that title back in 98. Here's McCowan to throw, completed the 10-yard line. Joe Smith out of the backfield, tumbles out near the 15, and making the stop, Sammy Davis. Might be more what they need to do to lose in attack, get Joe Smith in the ball game, catching the ball. He catches four balls a game, and pretty good receiver as well as a runner. Hasn't gotten on track running the football, but pretty good effective passer. A little play action here. He's your check down receiver. Quarterbacks know what that is. Everything's covered. Come down on my check down, and Joe Smith capable of making the play after the catch. Senior from Cleveland, Texas, second team all whack pick a year ago. Second down and two. Ball at the 14-yard line. Hand off, nothing doing. Smith is stopped. Line of scrimmage will be stopped at the 10 officially as Marcus Jasmine led the way along with Linus Smith out of Tyler John Tyler. Bill, I heard a whistle, and I think some I of the guys it. stopped, and I think that uh, the Louisiana Tech Bulldog offense, half of them went and half of them didn't go, and Luke McCown's walking over to the official after the play and said, hey, uh, there was a whistle here, and half of my guys didn't play. I don't know if that was the Aggie band that was about to strike up again or what, but uh, that was certainly the reaction I got. Third and seven from the 10-yard line. Bulldogs in a hole. McCowan running for his life. Going to keep it and scampers out of bounds across the 20 at the 22 yard line and got the first down. He knew what he had to do as Luke McCowan picks up 12 on the play and the Yankees will keep the defensive group out. Well, Luke McCowan showing that he can throw the ball and obviously move and run well outside of the pocket. Hey, there's a quarterback named McNabb with the Eagles who signed one heck of a contract. I think that this young man, you know what, I'm not going to put him in that category yet, but if you can run the ball and throw the ball, that's the new age of the quarterback, and Luke McCown showing some of those skills. Penwright was chasing him. There are his numbers tonight, passing and rushing for a total of 158. And
And the play stopped at the 18 yard line. Let's go down to Jim Knox with a former Aggie player. All right, thank you, Bill. I know a lot of Aggies will recognize this guy. Jay Brooks, number 21 in your program, of course, made some big plays last year, defensive cornerback for the Aggies. I know you want to get out there. You're dying to get out there. Oh, it's just so excited right now. You know, see my um, DBs out there playing hard. The record crew's playing a great game right now. Now, knowing that. Take yourself in their position, the DBs, knowing that you're going against a passing team like Wild Tech, you just like salivating all week thinking, hey, I could get three picks out of this one. This is one of the games you suck on your counter. There. It's one of those games that you get four or five picks as a, as a secondary. You can't wait. You want to take them to the house and show both of your fans. Right, we're going to let you go. You got to give some DBs some more tips. All right, thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Bill? Thanks, Jim. On a second and 14, McCown again keeps the football and is run out of bounds near the 27 yard line as Ronald Jones there for the Aggies. Well, Jay's talking about interceptions. They've had a couple balls in their hands. Brian Gamble had a couple balls went through his hands in the first half and but no interceptions yet for Luke McCown throwing the football doing a good job distributing it. You know Bill coming into this game he had thrown the ball to 14 different receivers over, over the course of a few ball games and that's pretty impressive. Seven interceptions eight touchdown passes coming in here. Third and five. Complete to Smith, who got whacked just as he turned around and caught the football. And he is shy of the first down as Randall Webb made the tackle. I think Joe Smith has Velcro on his jersey. <laughs> yeah. He, he turns around, the ball is there, and it just sticks. I, I don't think he even sees the football. Watch him here. He's going to turn late, and oh, there it is. Good hands. Hey, maybe there's Velcro on those gloves. Randall Webb with a big hit. Keep it in front of you. And that was kind of the philosophy. When Texas A&M last played Louisiana Tech here when they had Tim Rattay in that renowned passing game and Troy Edwards. Don't give me any. On fourth and five, they punt it away with Upton's punt. Fumbled by Jones. And then recovered quickly. And Big Booker T. Washington makes a heck of a hit coming down in coverage for the Bulldogs. Almost gets a fumble. He does get a fumble for the opportunity for the Bulldogs, but Texas A&M wisely get on it. You're going to see the return here by Jones and coming down. Watch big Booker T number nine. He almost closed line him here and separate the football from the body. That's what you're supposed to do. And luckily for the Aggies, they're on top of it and make a play. So Texas A&M fortunate there as Washington stripping the football and now Aggies First and 10 at the 39. Farmer. Nice run across the 45. He pushes his way out to the 48 yard line as Derek Farmer, the sophomore from Tyler. 91 yards and two touchdowns against Pittsburgh earlier this year. When you line up as an eye back, Bill, when you line up seven yards deep, you have a lot of vision to see the line of scrimmage. And running back, sometimes they fool themselves. They think a hole is not there. I think Derek Farmer's doing the right thing tonight. He's staying inside of his blocks and doing a good job hitting the hole. Second and one. Long. Incomplete intended for Bethel Johnson, covered on the play by Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson actually was beat. He put his right arm up and tried to knock it out of there, and I think he has right arm is going to do it. You see Johnson here, he's going to be the free safety on this side of the field, and he's just going to pick up the receiver. He's got deep zone coverage, and he just puts his right arm and just distracts him from catching the ball. Bethel Johnson, it was there. Would have been a pretty good catch. Johnson, of course, uh, had the ruptured spleen last year that cut his season short with just eight grabs and 68 yards after the junior year of 42 catches for 440. Dustin Long has now had the last five passes go incomplete. Give it to Farmer. Follows his block as well. And watch out, Farmer at the 30, the 20, and brought down at the 17-yard line. Willie Shepard with a stop. That's the burst of speed that Farmer has. Good job coming through the line of scrimmage. Good blocking. Watch here as the left side of the line picks up. They get hat on hat, and that's all they need to do. Farmer finds his way through there, and watch him accelerate away from the secondary. Good job that time by, by Willie Shepard coming. The senior makes a play, and Eric Farmer showing that he can make some big plays for this Aggie offense. 35 yards on the play for Derek. 
Aggies now with a first and 10, the ball on the 17. Long gives it to Farmer again, a huge hole. And he rolls inside the five yard line. Derek Farmer with Brazil and Curtis Randall making the tackle. I talked about eye backs, tail backs, seven yards deep from the line of scrimmage, having a chance of vision. Watch him here, he's seven yards deep. Watch what happens to all the pursuit, and he cuts it back here. There's no one there to, for him to pick him up. Good job that time by Farmer of reading and vision and accelerating through the hole. To the left side of the liner, big Billy Yates making a good block, and Hightower blocking to the outside, the left tackle, opening a big hole for the running back. First and goal from the four-yard line. Farmer back to the line of scrimmage and Antonio Crow makes the tackle. And there's a little stiffer defense here by the Bulldogs. Good job of stepping up in there, closing things out. But I think the Aggies, I think they found a way to, to move some people out of there. Their offensive line is doing a good job. It's brought nine people up to the line of scrimmage and the extra bodies, they can't account for them with the safeties coming in the holes. Farmer, the first freshman to lead the Ags in rushing since Darren Lewis last year when he ran for 503 yards. He had two 100-yard games, 133 against Iowa State, 100 against Notre Dame. He's adding them up here. Second down and goal now from the fourth. Long tucks it under and gets right back to about the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of a yard on the play at the five-yard line. Well, that was a smart play. That was not a mistake play. That was a smart play by Dustin Long. Coverage was good by the Bulldogs on the outside. They're all manned up out there. You got pressure from the outside. The block is missed there by Farmer, but he tucks it forward and goes north and south instead of making a big loss and a, uh, with a sack or at least throwing the ball in the end zone and possibly having an interception. Third and goal now from the five-yard line. Farmer the lone back alongside the quarterback Long. Johnson and Taylor wide right. Murphy down below. Long keeps it back to the five. And they'll have to decide if they want the field goal to be a chip shot or go for it with Quincy Miles making the tackle on this play. Quarterback draw, I don't know, not a bad call that time, but good job that time by the defensive lineman. I think Jeff Gardner needs to stay with his block a little bit longer. He throws him and lets him come around. And good job that time by the defense. Credit Quincy Miles, big player inside. So Todd Pegram, one of two with the 32 and the 46, the 32 in the make. And this one a 22 yarder. He missed it. So the 22 yarder, much like an extra point. And that is certainly disappointing. So we stay at 17 to three, Texas A&M. We'll be back. Welcome back as R.C. Slocum strolls the sidelines and obviously not happy over that. I think it's the fear of any coach. You get a 17-3 lead, an impressive first half. You come out, you don't, first of all, punch it in, and then you miss basically an extra point. Well, the field goal opportunity was at the near hash, which is one of those angled field goals. We see them all the time. Those seem to be the most difficult for kickers. I, you know, there's something the coaches think that they need to put those in there and kind of gives you a little more gray hair, perhaps more than R.C. has. McCowan to throw and incomplete. Covering in the play was Sean Weston, junior from Inglewood, California. He's got one interception this year. He's, he's enjoyed himself out there. Well, they're happy with Weston's play. He's doing a pretty good job for him. He's their nickel back. They're going to put him in the ball game and let him cover. Playing on the outside here, you see him. Got great coverage. Just a good job that time for the receiver coming back to it and trying to make a play on the ball. Second and 10 for the 20-yard line. Cowan hits Curry, 25, and ridden hard out of bounds near the 28, 29 yard line. Now this is that wide receiver screen. A lot of folks run this, and what they do is they cross block outside. I'm gonna come in here and come out here and slip one behind and get him up in that crease right there. It all works well, everything's gonna look good here. Good job blocking there, block outside, and watch Curry get in the middle of that zone. Those blocks, good execution. You have to hustle on defense. You have to have players come from the inside out to make a play on that screen. 
Archie McDaniel, the freshman from Bay City, Texas, made the stop. The La Tech quarterbacks on the sideline signal the plays in as McCowan comes up under center here. And a third down and one. Back to pass. Looking for Norwood. No flag thrown on the near sideline. Yeah. Weston covering. Now that's a poor call. You're here at Texas A&M University. And you're going to go for the home run on. I don't think you want to make that call. If you're trying to make something happen. You need to throw the ball in an intermediate range. Your intermediate passing game has been working for you. Luke McCown throws one up there. I don't know if it's by design or a play call, but certainly not a good effort. Dustin Upton, the junior from Longview, Texas, stands back to punt the football away. He's averaging 41 yards. This is eighth kick. Jones tackled near the 40 and the flag thrown as that'll be violation of the halo I suppose. I think that's the beanbag Bill. That's okay. the beanbag in the middle field. We do have a flag on the near side of the field though perhaps there's a hole or a block here on the the near numbers is where the I see a flag. Wilson made the tackle 33 yards on the punt. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. Not contact foul. Ten uh, yards. Interference with the First opportunity foul. to catch the kick. Well, let me tell you something. That man who throws that flag is not even in position to throw the flag. Okay? He's two and a half yards away, but the referee who throws it is on the near sideline, which is way out over here to the right, and he throws it. You have a back judge who's right there next to him, and he doesn't throw the flag. That's what Jack McNell saying. What, 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 he's right there. He throws the beanbag. Everything's fine, but the guy on the side throws the flag. Net, net. It's a good play for the Aggies. They get five yards. Don't blame me, coach. Be upset, too. First to 10 for Texas A&M from the 44. 49. Check that. McNeil, the new quarterback, and it is incomplete. Shepard covering and a flag thrown. So Reggie McNeil comes in for the first time tonight and right away comes out throwing. He's the highly recruited freshman from Lufkin, Texas. He picks up a first down here. Well, he's going to try to throw one out to Jamar Taylor, who's had an excellent night Pass catching the football, the and Shepard's going to cover. Yards and he goes up too early and, and impedes Taylor on the throw and attempt to make the football, so it's going to be pass interference. Shepard comes up lame on the plays on the sideline being tended to. McNeil, who has played in two of the three games and really got thrown into a tough situation last week at the Virginia Tech game, and this is more to what they would like to give him the opportunity to kind of grow a little bit. Yeah, tough, tough opportunity. Last week comes in on the five or six yard line, his own five or six yard line, trying to go down the field. And that's it's not easy to do for a young quarterback and an offensive football team that really wasn't in sync last week. First down and 10 from the 34 yard line. McNeil to throw it. Incomplete and nearly picked off by Delone Williams. Uh, lucky. Yeah, that's the word I'd use. Lucky because yeah. this ball is thrown behind the receiver and it should be intercepted. There's no doubt about this. Throws the ball inside and behind and Reggie McNeil's trying to lead the ball outside, but it, it just didn't get where he needed to go. This is where Jack McNeil's got to be saying, we haven't intercepted a pass and this is the fifth game of the season. You see something like that, you kind of wonder if you ever are. Yeah, defensive players, sometimes there's a reason they play defensive back, but uh, obviously <laughs> when, in situations like that, it's in the bread basket, you need to make the grab. Second and 10 from the 34 for McNeil now. <laughs> Weber, who's football. Bulldogs claiming they've got it, no signal yet. Weber got popped pretty good near the 35, and it is recovering the fumble. Excellent play though, an excellent, uh, excellent run very well. The, the way they operated this play is exactly how you want to do it. Joe Weber misses the hole. Watch him here, he's gonna take the ball to draw and he cuts back. He needs to stay outside, it's open all the way, but he cuts back into traffic and all the hats are there, all the red hats are there and watch here, you're gonna have a race for the ball. And then on the defensive side, there's number 90, with Booker T. Washington making a play on the ball. Good job by him. Watch what I'm talking about here. Uh, Joe Weber should cut the ball outside. There's nobody there. There was absolutely no one there, and he had Hightower sealing it inside. Big Billy Yates as well, so uh, just a bad read by the tailbone. Washington with the recovery. Randall and 
Miles caused the fumble and the Louisiana Tech player down. The clock stopped here with 5-10 to go in the third period. Chris Marshall the Jackson, Mississippi, the injured player. Now that's what you need defensively. Your defense needs to make a play, whether it's an interception or cause a fumble and pull something out. Louisiana Tech has another opportunity to get something going. We got a chance here to talk, Gary, that what do you think with Louisiana Tech as far as admire the, the scheduling they've done and they've beaten some big folks, but you get this is their second of four straight on the road. They were in happy in Pennsylvania last week, and next week they come back to Texas, go to Rice. They look like a team that is slowly getting worn out when you're going day in and day out against these heavyweights. Well, I'll tell you what, their, their schedule for their football team, they only have four home games the entire year. They have one game in Shreveport, which is considered a neutral side, but four home games for that football team, and they've been on the road a long time. But you know what? I credit this football team of going to those places. You go to Clemson, you play in, play in Beth Valley, that's a tough place to play. And, and then you go out to, to Penn State and play there and come down here to Texas A&M. Hey, they want to recruit and they want to say, hey, we go and play the best in the country, and that's what we're going to do. If you want to play the best, come play at Louisiana Tech. That's their recruiting slogan. You know, and a lot, not a lot of people know a lot about Louisiana Tech. Now they're in the WAC conference. They feel like they can compete there. And they have actually have a chance to get to, you know, good opportunities to get the bowl games. McCowan brings them out here. First and 10, 33 yard line. Joe Smith got a good burst off the football out to the 38 and a half yard line and Ty Warren has been banged around a little bit. Let's find out his status with Jim. All right, real quick, Bill, as we zero in the back of Ty Warren, you look at that right hamstring right now, a bag of ice. That is not good news for the wrecking crew. He's standing on the sidelines watching the defense, but right now it looks like something going on with the hamstring, a bag of ice icing it down, Bill. Thank you, Jim. Ty Sr. from here at Bryan, Texas. Second and five of the 38 for the Bulldogs, down 17 to three. McCowan. Complete and across on the catch that time, Major Richmond, senior from Slidell, Louisiana, who has been ill most of the week, and Jones made the tackle. Mike Hank would go ahead, wants to go ahead and pressure here, so he brings the free safety. You see Jackson Appel, he's gonna blitz, and that's exactly where the ball is gonna be thrown by McCown. Appel's get picked up. And then Luke McCown throws it down the middle of the field where the safety came from. Good job of execution. And when you blitz, sometimes you get burned, and the Bulldogs get it to the a and Aggies that time. Richmond's first grab. He didn't dress for the Penn State game. Had strep throat and been ailing all week. 4-10 to go in the period. And a first and 10, and Smith carries across the 40 to 39. Johnny Jolly, a freshman from Houston, makes the tackle. You talked about uh, big Ty Warren out of the football game, and Ty's a force up there. You know, big guy is one of the best defensive linemen in the country, Bill, and he, certainly in the Big 12 Conference. And talking to Mike Hankwitz, their defense coordinator, he said he may be the best defensive line, lineman here at Texas A&M since Sam Adams. He's a Lombardi candidate and an outland candidate, so when he's not in the football game, you know, they, they may not have their best players on the field. Yeah, there's a difference, maybe. Even though they've got some qualified backup people, uh, you miss Ty Warren. All conference first team pick for the Big 12 last year. McCowan, second and six from the 39, and going to have to call a timeout as the play clock was winding down. And the first communication we've had, you know, a lot of noise here at Texas A&M. The fans are into it, obviously. One thing about a team that throws the ball like McCown does and company at for Louisiana Tech, they have all hand signals. They use hand signals to get to their wide receivers to communicate the plays, and usually they don't have these communication problems. We talked about at the end of the first half where they normally would go in a semi-huddle or even a, a no, no huddle situation on a normal situation. They haven't done that much tonight. Perhaps they're trying to actually run the clock a little bit, Bill. Yeah, you kind of wonder here with uh, this situation and 3.23 to go and McCown over visiting and trying to take advantage of Warren in his situation. And, well, Louisiana Tech, that was the thing we talked about at the beginning of the game. When you have the weapon of Smith, and you don't just have to throw the football, and that's what's different about this team now than when they were here a couple years ago. They can do more than throw the football. Well, if you're going against a defense here, Luke McCown is one of the best in the country, number two overall in total defense. Luke McCown's had a tough night, 121 yards tonight, normally averaging 300-plus yards. Got a little over a quarter 
uh, to go here in this football game. So this Aggie defense has come to play tonight. Joe Smith been held to 22 yards rushing. You see what he's averaged on the, on the ground each each ball game. So a little bit th things aren't happening the way they normally do for the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Second and six of the 39. flushed out still on his feet and hit hard inside the 40 at the 37 yard line by Randall Webb but he picked up some yardage on the play <laughs> Johnny Jolly he's trying to tell himself hey I need to get a sack on this play watch big number 60 there in the middle he's the nose guard he just pushing through one pushing through two spins around hey there's my boy got me a sack oops Luke turns around and goes forward and play by the quarterback. They don't have those tearaway jerseys anymore. <laughs> McCown wishes they did. He might have been able to get loose for a little bit more than he got out of it. Six yards. It's third and four. Five receivers. In trouble now. Got down and set. Back at the 49-yard line as Penwright was there. That's Jared Penwright's fourth sack on the season. He is their outside linebacker. Best pass rusher coming off the corner, doing a good job. Coming from the backside of a right-handed cornerback, you're going to see Penn right up here. Just work around to the outside and continue to, to, to make a play on the quarterback. Gets around big Taiwan bro on the left side at tackle position and gets a good sack for the A&M defense. He forced a fumble in the first half. He's forced a fumble in every game, and now he gets a sack. Just normally here, McCown's been able to move around pretty easily and get that ball off, but uh, good Good job and hustle by the defensive player. Upton shanks this one over the Aggie bench. And well, he's in big trouble here. We'll see where they spot this football. So interesting track the path of the punter as he goes to the opposite sideline. He goes to the end away from the head yeah. coach. Uh, uh, he's done a good job punting tonight, though. They've they put some balls down there. That one just uh, came off his foot the wrong way. 13 yards in Texas A&M. We'll get the football back on its own 36-yard line. Well, we get to see Reggie McNeil again, I think, Bill. Young quarterback come in. First shot out of the box. Throw it down the field. I like that. 6'2", 189 out of Lufkin. Took his team to the state title and a 15-1 record. And remember, he's been on campus, what, a month and a half? Hey, his first completion as an Aggie, school hadn't even started yet. He talks back. We're talking raw, just by getting in the whole routine of things. The deal rolls out and incomplete. Intended for Jamar Taylor. Taylor's got a touchdown tonight. Jamar's telling, hey, you got to take a little bit off of that one. The big junior receivers had a good night. He says, hey, just throw it to me between the numbers and I'll catch it. It's got to be exciting here. Freshman, young freshman come in here and play and play in front of these, this crowd. A lot of tradition here at Texas A&M. He wants to be a big part of it, and a lot of a lot of expectations are sur uh, surrounding that young man. Kyle Field capacity 82,600. They proudly announce as the game starts that largest football field in the state of Texas as far as seating capacity. Farmer brought down at the 36-yard line. Antonio Crow makes a nice play on Farmer on the draw play. Gets off the block. Farmer's going to get the delay and come inside. Has a hole, but it closes pretty quickly as Farmer gets off the, excuse me, Crow gets off the block. Junior, good job playing inside there, the linebacker spot. Well, that's a third and ten situation now. So Reggie McNeil, you know, they're going to put his feet to the fire here. Third down, do you blitz a young quarterback? Third and long. See how he reacts. Third and ten from the 36 for the Aggies. With a 17 Forward at the line of scrimmage. McNeil. He got drilled, but he completes it at the 46 yard line, and that'll move the chains. And there is a flag thrown. McNeil, boy, he took a shot. Cato made the tackle. And not only are they going to get about 18 yards on the pass play, but the personal foul is going to be tacked on on top of that. Rough the, the passer. On the defense, 15 yards Here's added at the end of the run. First down. They look at Reggie McNeil. You see pressure right there. Bingo right up in the face mask. And he throws the ball in there, makes a strike, takes it there. And good job of finding the open receiver in the middle of the field. Here. I like this. Work to the open area, and the quarterback throws a strike. Good job by the Aggies. 
Curtis Randall is the player that hit him. And Taylor, the receiver, picks up 18 yards. And it's a first and 10 for Texas A&M. Final minute, third quarter. Ball on the 31-yard line. Deal to Farmer. Escapes a couple. Nice job by Farmer. Has gone down to the 25-yard line, and Brazil made the tackle. Boy, it sure looked like they had him hemmed up at the line of scrimmage, but the Farmer does a good job. But just keep picking and keep working to the outside. You're going to see the pursuit here of the Bulldog defense coming outside. You see the center get picked off there. That's Jeff Handgard. It makes blocks no one, and there's one missed tackle. And I'll tell you, Farmer does a good job going through a couple of guys, getting some extra yards. These numbers are ringing up for the night, getting close to that century mark. Second down and four. And that ends the period. The playoff by the time. Texas A&M, as they were at the half, holding a 17-3 third quarter lead, but on a pretty good looking drive as we go to the fourth quarter. We'll be right back here at College Station. Welcome back, R.C. Slocum and the Aggies are 17 to 3. Why? Much of it. Sophomore Dustin Long's performance tonight. Pretty good job tonight. 12 of 13, 196 yards, throwing the ball effectively, finding Jamar Taylor on a couple of big plays throughout the night. His offensive line has done a good job blocking. He shows that he can roll out of the pocket. He's actually rushed for over 20 yards tonight on four tries, throwing the ball effectively. And I think the production, more importantly, uh, from the offensive side of the football, R.C. Spoken is very happy with how well his Aggies have played. Five action to start the fourth period. And Brazil makes the tackle on Derek Farmer. First and ten at the 19 now for the Aggies. So Farmer headed toward that century mark. 13 for 87. Long, 12 of 23 for 196 in the passing. McNeil is one of three for 18. First down. McNeil gives it off to Farmer. Good hard work by Farmer. Pulls his way to the 15 where Adam McConathy makes the tackle. Not big a stature, 5'11", 192, but watch the body lean that Farmer has getting through there. He's got contact with him at the line of scrimmage and just carries the linebacker, McConathy, four or five yards. That's good effort there by the tailback. Well, Gary, we talked earlier about uh, play calling, all this other stuff. I think a message has gotten through to the players that you're going to have to execute a little bit better, play a little harder, a little bit more push from all areas. Uh, it's, a, it's a team effort all around. Coaches, players, execution. The Aggies are doing very well tonight. Second down and six, McNeil in trouble. Rolling out, and complete, ball loose, was it a touchdown? Recovered in the end zone. It's gonna be an interception, I believe, by Louisiana Tech, Michael Johnson. Porter got popped as he went into the end zone, Gary, and ruled no possession. Well, and then an interception. First of all, McNeil is lucky here. It's almost intercepted. It should have been. But I tell you, Porter, as the way I see it, he has a touchdown. He gets across the line of scrimmage. And no, nope, I'm wrong. He is not. The ball pops out. Good job that time by the Bulldogs. Converging, I thought, from the first angle I saw, he might have got it across the line. Is that Shepard coming up and knocking it out? It is. The cornerback and the Bulldogs make a play here. Here's one right at the end line. Is this the ball is across angle. the plane? No, the no, ball is I don't not think across. it did. It's not where the player goes across. The ball has to go across, and the Bulldogs make a big play defensively. And Michael Johnson comes up with the interception, or the fumble recovery, I should say, as that goes as a pass completion and a fumble. Well, it all depends on whether Does it as a completion, because if he didn't have, didn't have the. I guess it's not an intercept. Yeah, it's a complete. So, Two of four for so 33 yards. Well, a completion does, and a fumble. My question is, okay, he has control of it, so it definitely is a fumble. Shepard causes the fumble, and it's recovered. Net here, it's the uh, Bulldogs coming out now at the 20-yard line, second and 10. McConaughey, the Aggie crowd, now getting after it. Curry 
slipped by a tackler. Brought down by Jones. And stop there. It'll be Texas A&M. The play made by the with a third and six now. The ball on the 24-yard line coming up. Well, this is an interesting play. You've got Joe Smith to the outside. You've got Curry coming here. You've got two levels. I'm leaving. So you know that the quarterback has three or four different levels to go to. So that's what's difficult for, for the defense to cover with this offense. McCown. Chased by Webb, completes it. At the 30, as Smith rules out of bounds at the 34-yard line, that'll be a first down, Louisiana Tech. Nicely done by Joe Smith and McCowan completing it under heavy pressure. Well, he rolls back to the left, catches Joe Smith, who is, again, he is his check down receiver coming out to the flat here, you'll see him. Then you're gonna have a missed tackle. Sammy Davis, number 22, comes up, should make the play right here. Little flyby, good job by Joe Smith showing his quickness. It's a first down for Louisiana Tech. Now Smith, that dual roll, came in with 17 receptions and also leading him in rushing at 367. First and 10. Play action is McCown again in trouble. Incomplete intended for the tight end Aaron Capps, who is from Mesquite, Texas, a sophomore. Aaron Caps is wide open from the get-go. Good play fake that time. It held the, the Texas A&M defense play side. Watch the play fake here to Joe Smith. He really sells it big time. See the defensive lineman going there, and Caps is wide open. This is just a poor throw by McCann. 12-22 remaining. And while Texas A&M never trailed, appeared to be punching in for almost a ceiling-type touchdown here and then a weird fumble, and now Louisiana Tech, a little bit of momentum, it's second and 10 at the 35. At that pass, look out. And going deep, incomplete. Intended for Norwood, Ahmad Harris is the man that threw the pass, the senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. When you run that slip screen several times, this is a compliment play to it. You're going to have Harris come back here, and he's going to be the quarterback now. He catches the ball behind the line of scrimmage. It is a lateral. He throws it out, just overthrows Norwood. Great call, Gary. It was a good call. He had a big play there, possibly a touchdown. You see the fake block and take off. Norwood had him set up. He think The cornerback was thinking, hey, I got that screen play again. I got to beat this block. And Norwood giving it all he could. Third and 10 now at the 35. Time out here by Louisiana Tech. They don't like it. They've got Luke McCown. Turns to the referee behind him and calls timeout. We'll take a brief timeout as well with Louisiana Tech trailing Texas A&M 17-3 here in the fourth. Seventeen three Texas A&M as Louisiana Tech a key third and ten from its own 35 yard line following the timeout. Bill and Gary Reasons, Jim Knox as Jack McNell, the Bulldog coach, looks on. McCown the quarterback. Just a three man rush on McCown, selling out for the coverage. Got a man, Franklin. Was he out of bounds? Yes, out of bounds. Eric Franklin, the receiver, and Louisiana Tech. One would presume would kick it away with 12 10 to go. That's so close. Luke McCown knows, hey, I'll throw just a little bit more inside. We've got the first down. Good effort there. Good stand by the Aggies, a good defensive series. Well, the Bulldogs are showing they are going to be a force again in defending their WAC championship. Fresno State is leading right 17 14. That's in the second quarter from the WAC. Colorado State beat WAC member Nevada 32 28 tonight. That's an improved team. They beat BYU earlier. The punt, everybody gets away, rolls out of bounds on the Aggies sideline at the 31 yard line. And Dustin Upton with the punt, and Texas AM will take it over there after 34 yard kick. And speaking of kick, let's kick it back down to Jim Knox. There we go, Bill. Hey, I was down on the Aggie sideline, and after Reggie McNeil threw that interception, Greg Porter, of course, fumbled the ball. He went straight to the freshman who was sitting on the bench and said, hey, get the head up. That was my fault. And he wanted Reggie to get down on that one. Clearly his fault as he fumbled that one in the end zone. Yeah, and that's the way it went down statistically as a fumble by Porter. <laughs> so 
Take a look here at the Aggies offensively. 30 rushing plays, 27 passing plays. A little different play call than a week ago where they rushed the ball predominantly. You know, Bill, and more importantly, with their production offensively, Texas A&M last week against Virginia, Virginia Tech, they averaged 2.5 yards per offensive play. Tonight, they're averaging 6.6 .6 yards per offensive play. Obviously, things are going a lot better for Texas A&M. It comes down to execution, and as we saw in that graphic, sometimes it comes down to play call. Yeah, and let's give credit, too, that Virginia Tech is not just a good, but I think a very good, if not great, football team and ranked in the top ten. But uh, there's also just a little bit different look about this A&M offense uh, tonight and, and the play calling and what they've come up with. And just a different spark, which this team certainly needed. Second down and ten at the 31 now. Long back in as the quarterback to throw the football. Got a man, Taylor incomplete. Hung it up a little bit, and that gave Corey Brazil time to get there and knock it away. Play action pass, you're allowing the quarterback to throw the ball. We've got Dustin Long back in there at the quarterback position. Reggie McNeil taking a breather now. Watch the block here, number 51. Taylor Whitley gets his guy, and now we're throwing the ball outside to Taylor. He has to slow down for the ball. He actually has the defender beaten. Dustin Long throwing a couple of good balls here already to Taylor tonight and made a good play. And that was a good play by Corey Brazil breaking on the football. Another Big 12 whack matchup today as Kansas is leading Tulsa. 35-19, that in the third quarter in Tulsa. Oklahoma, third ranked in the country, is blanking South Florida 28-0. Four minutes to go in the third. Here is Long, got hit as he threw the football, and it is picked off at the 45, but a flag is thrown as Long got hammered just as he released the football, and Lee Johnson comes up with interception, would be the first of the year for the Bulldogs if it stands. <laughs> I don't think it's going to stand. I think that's the back their luck, judge isn't it? threw a penalty flag here in the middle of the field. And usually he's watching the inside, the number two receiver, which is normally the tight end position. But in this, these offenses today, that's the usually the slot receiver. And sometimes it's going to get holding or pushing off. I think they're going to call it against the Bulldogs. Maybe we're going to it's take holding it. on the defense on an eligible pass receiver before the pass is thrown. 10 yards, previous spot, first down. Jack Picknell, you see his reaction. I don't know what he said. Isn't the only ineligible receiver, blah, 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 blah. Holding, you usually do that about receivers, and you got to wonder who's holding who. Is this the hold right there? Yeah, that's what it is. That's the hold. you got the you got the back judge actually right there coming from throwing behind. That's what he saw. Quarterback here taking a shot. Dustin Long gets popped pretty good from the outside. That's on time by Big Van Hoy, the big defensive end. That's the tackle, rather. And Louisiana Tech, nine penalties, 97 yards. AM, Gary, just three penalties tonight, and they had come into this game with 34 penalties, averaging 11 per game. And big difference there tonight. Well, that's smart football. You know, you're disciplined, and that's what you have to do. You have to play smart football. You can't, can't give teams plays with penalties. First and 10 from the 41 after the penalty. Huge play as AM gets the ball back. And Weber bounces off one and rolls across the 50 to the 45 of the Bulldogs. Corey Brazil brings down Joe Weber. And the linebacker number five, Curtis Randall, steps up in the hole. And what he does, he picks a, he picks a side. You're going to watch the play here develop. He picks a side on the blocker and spins around. You can't do that. Weber gets through the hole there and makes a good run into the secondary. And Weber now, 11 carries, 40 yards. Farmer leads Texas A&M with 14 for 91. McCowan is a leading rusher for Louisiana Tech. 10 carries, 60 yards. Because he has 53 on one. Here is Weber again to the 40, close to the 39-yard line before he's brought down. It'll be a third down and six, or second and six coming up. Just banging away here. Good job by the offensive line. Just stay at them. And Texas A&M is wearing down this Bulldog defense. You know, when it comes down to winning and losing football games, Bill, I would say most coaches would actually tell you that it was really one in the trenches. If you can play effectively in your offensive or defensive lines and you win that, those battles, good things are going to happen because if you win those battles, the outside things take care of themselves. And, uh, right now, Texas A&M is winning the battle up front. 
And with the clock moving at 9.50 to go, second and six from the 40, and rolling out is long, incomplete, intended near the 35-yard line. Thomas Carragher wants a penalty on Johnson, but he's not going to get that. Carragher, the big tight end, defensive lineman a year ago coming across on the bootleg pass, trying to throw him a ball, and actually caught a ball last year in the bowl game, and you're going to see Carragher here. He's going to come across on the boot pass. I like big defensive linemen who want to go play tight end and help your football team. Ball just a little bit high. You know he wanted it. <laughs> Doesn't get thrown many in his direction. His sophomore from Skidmore, Texas. And it makes it third and six now at the 40 for the Aggies. Uh, they're at the Louisiana Tech 40-yard line. Draw play. Farmer found a hole. And Farmer's got the first down. He'll move the chains to the 28, maybe the 27-yard line where Booker T. Washington finally stops it. This delay draw has worked every time tonight for the Texas A&M Aggies when they run it to perfection. When the tailback reads the hole, Weber missed it one time, but Farmer's hit it every time he's called for him and does a good job getting a first down for the Aggies. He's now well up over 100 yards, 104 yards on the night, 15 carries. Good job by Weber. First and 10 at the 27 of the Bulldogs. Farmer slices to the left side near the hash mark and is stopped at the 25. Adam McConaughey makes the tackle for Louisiana Tech. Bulldogs coming in here 2-2, two 1-0 two, in the whack with a win over Tulsa. They also beat the Big 12's Oklahoma State. A&M 2-1 with a lone loss to Vatek last weekend. This is uh, the middle of the Tech run. It was Virginia Tech last <laughs> week, Louisiana Tech, Va La, and next week Texas Tech. I guess uh, Chan Gailey and Georgia Tech wasn't available for R.C. Slocum, huh? What a game that'll be next week, hosting the Red Raiders here. Still a ways to go to put this one away. Second down and eight. And on the ground is Weber. Pushes it forward to the 22-yard line. McConaughey makes the tackle. If you look at the two backs, Derek Farmer, he's 5'11", 192 pounds, and Joe Weber, 6'233". I bet mean, he's more like 240 pounds. <laughs> Big guy back there, and he runs a lot differently than Weber does, uh, excuse me, Farmer does. Powerful runner. Goes through there and hits people and knocks them back, and Derek Farmer, where he's more of a quicker back, but he shows that he has body lean also. So two complementary backs here, one with power and one with speed. Third down and five at the 22. AM trying to grind it out. Now looking to throw, and Long does so and is complete for the first down inside the 15 yard line as Jerome Wallace made the tackle on Keith Joseph. His third catch of the night, that same play, come out of the eye backfield, just a quick release, the bootleg across. Weber, and you see Joseph coming out here, sneak pass, and Dustin Long bingo right there too. And the linebacker's running from the inside, that's just a long way to go. Jerome Wallace, the middle linebacker, has to track him from the inside out. And he's got to play that run fake first. So that's why he's a step or two behind. And Long, after a string of incompletions, gets his first completion in the second half. He's 13 of 26, and he goes over the 200-yard mark for the night, 205. More importantly, first to 10 at the 13. Farmer broke a tackle and drags one with him down inside the 10-yard line. Showing a little punch of his own. Good job getting through there. And Determined runner. Wallace makes the tackle. A lot of rotation here on Texas A&M's offense. A lot of personnel groupings. They're trying to give Louisiana Tech a different look. That way they have balance. They don't. They're not always doing the same thing over and over and over again. They're moving people in and out of the lineup. We talked about it earlier. Dino Babers, the offense coordinator, not calling the plays tonight. Kevin Sumlin, the wide receivers coach, who's the assistant head coach on this football team, calling the plays tonight. And I think doing a pretty good job. See Farmer with a season high, second down and six now, and Farmer hit hard, but his momentum carried him down to the six-yard line where Michael Johnson made the tackle. And he's got to get to the three-yard line for a first down. They still can get a first inside the inside the three. So Aggies have a third down here and three or four to go for a first down. A lot of quarterbacks and offensive systems are going. You see Dustin Long in the wristband there. They can put a lot of plays on there, and then on the sideline, they just signal in, you know, a couple of numbers. He just looks on the wristband and says, hey, we're going to run uh, number 18, which is blah, 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 whatever it is. 
pretty effective system. That way it cuts down on the communication and the signaling that the sideline has to do to the quarterback. Speeds up the whole process. Third down and three. And up the middle, touchdown, Texas A&M, Derek Farmer. So Farmer having quite a night as he gets in for the TD and Farmer getting his fourth touchdown of the season. Well, a whole lot more smooching going on in the stands here at Texas A&M on the right guard. Taylor Whitley, number 51. Watch him block. Does a good job here sealing off everybody inside. Turns his man. Farmer runs right behind him and touchdown for the Aggies. Six yards on the TD run. And now for the point after, Todd Pegram and flags thrown before they can get things underway. I'm sure he's happy that there's a flag. That ball's right, and he's missed a couple of field goals. Ball start on the offense. Five yards. You know, the coaches tell these kickers, go ahead and kick them through no matter what the penalty or the situation is. Just go through because you can't make any adjustments. You never know. You never know. You know, we thought we heard a whistle earlier tonight, but there wasn't a whistle. And so kickers have to go through that route. Uh, this young man's, you know, having his struggles tonight. Like I said, missed a couple of field goals, one longer one, 122 yards from a hash mark, and, and here we are lined up for an extra point. And he needs to put this one right down the middle. He's the first true freshman to kick for R.C. Slocum in his 14 years here, so that adds a little bit to it. Order the hold, the kick, and this one is up and good. So Pegram takes care of business here, and the Aggies make it 24 to 3. 5.52 remaining in the football game here in College Station. Farmer with a score. Last word. Oh no, here we go again. Electrifying, gravity defying, mesmerizing. Oh wait, there's more. Things are heating up. A lot of smash, a lot of controversy. Here we go, here we go. Welcome to the jungle. I am all over this. I am all over that. The last word, reinventing sports talk as you know it. Weeknights on Fox Sports Net. Hey, Tahoe. Brian Jordan. How's the show going? It's going pretty well. Looks like you lost a couple pounds. Yeah. No, really. I almost didn't recognize you. Seriously? Hey, you want to come on the show sometime? Sounds good. Catch up with you later. All right. This guy is one of the best conditioned athletes in the league. Yeah, not like Tom's fat ass. <laughs> you ready to see what it takes? The stars have loaded up for another run. This team can go all the way. With an attack led by Mike Madonna, nobody's going to be able to stop Dallas when they're on their game. This is their time. This is their year. Stars Hockey returns October 15th on Fox Sports Net. Texas A&M gets the first score of the second half on Farmer getting the TD and Long coming back in to revitalize the offense and Aggies with a 24-3 lead and Skates will now kick it off for Texas A&M. Motes and Franklin are the deep people for Louisiana Tech. Franklin from the goal line. Hit hard at the 12 and that is not the Eric Franklin that we saw go 84 against Tulsa on a kick return. As the Aggies came down there. Let's go quickly down to Jim Knox. Now. All right, thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. Tell you what, this offensive line, the Aggies doing a great job opening some big holes. And how about big number 75, Jamie Hightower? He has a little bit more incentive in this game. You see, guys, he went to Jacksonville High School, the same high school Luke McCallum went to. And he was a junior. Luke was a senior. They went all the way to the regional semifinals before losing to Nederland. Needless to say, Jamie Hightower of Jacksonville will have bragging rights when he goes home during the offseason, guys. First to 10 and incomplete from Luke McCown. Yeah, they're Louisiana Tech with a, a number of Texans, as you might imagine, on their squad out of Ruston, Louisiana, Louisiana Tech. And also kind of interesting, Jack McNell telling us, Gary, that 
they recruit some junior college players and redshirt them, which is something you don't see very often. Well, it's called a three for two program. If they can get a junior college transfer, if they still have eligibility, they can redshirt those guys. And they get two years for them. If they say it's kind of like having a freshman come into the program, so they feel like they can contribute, yet they're a little bit more seasoned. Do things a little bit differently in order to compete in the Division One level. Second and ten. McCowan intercepted. The 45 at the 30. This is Weston. Weston inside the five-yard line. Sean Weston. And you can see why they're excited about him in Aggie Land. 44 yards on the interception return. Weston gets his second pick of the season. Sean Weston has deep outside coverage, does a nice job of just laying back in the defensive zone, deep zone. Going to be a little communication problem here between Luke McCown and the receiver on the outside. He's going to take it to the inside and watch the ball drift back to the outside, and Weston is there, makes a good play, and gets away from the, the, the receiver trying to pull him down and doing a good job of returning his football, gets it inside the five. As a freshman, he was a freshman All-American and broke up 15 passes last year. Seven breakups, one interception. This year, back more to his freshman level. Sets the Aggies up. McNeil had trouble with the snap. Finally reaches out and hands it off to Goins. He's to the five. And a touchdown. Dwayne Goins. They're all getting in on the party now. It all starts with the wrecking crew, the defense. That's what makes the play here. It sets it up inside the five-yard line. The Aggie offense taking care of business here. Again, Reggie McNeil there. Hey, get the snap, young man. Get it back to your tailback. And Goins got the speed, breaks the tackle, takes it around the corner, and gets a score for the Aggies. So Goins, first carry, touchdown. He said, Coach, I need more PT. <laughs> I know where that end zone is. Yeah, stats look good now. Hey, I, I got something I can brag about. It's three yard run and it's so easy. He said, I can see him. They say, it's so easy. <laughs> it's big time college football. And it's easy. Quarterback even had trouble with a snap. All I do is get it to me. Yeah, that ball was kind of bobbing there. McNeil had to stay in there a little bit longer and make sure he got that one. Point after. He's up and good by Pegram. And it's 31 to 3. Now the old man smiling now. RC Slocum happy about the production of his Aggies. Obviously, offensively, things are going well for him tonight. A lot of production. The defense turns the ball over to him. Going showing he's got some speed. Hey, get me in the game, coach. You know the old song. Put me in, coach. Okay, I've, I've done this a lot. I know what to do. Give it back to the official. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's kind of nice to see for a change. Yeah, it is. You know, it's refreshing. You know, young man comes in, makes a play. Automatic, okay, give it to the official, and let's go do it again. Well, he might be their fastest player. He's a senior from Lamarck, Texas, and... Wow, look at that blocking up front. We kind of glazed over that, but inside, guard through center to the backside. Oh, bingo, look at that sealed block. Who is that? Oh, I tell you, that's pretty good blocking there. Stacy Jones. Jones. Yeah, yeah, senior from Midland Lee. Just well, took talked two about him being a goal line blocker. Look at Stacy here. Gets outside and seals back. Turns back and gets two for one. I like this. Got him on the ground, too. Bingo. Goins might go over and shake his hand, too. <laughs> All right. Do we, do we have one more angle on this? There you go. I, I knew we'd get another angle. Good. Look at that. Look at that. Good job of blocking. I think he's having fun tonight. Great crew we've got here tonight. Hope you're enjoying it all. Texas A&M with the 31-3 lead now. Aggies led 10-0 after one, 17-3 at the half. A scoreless third period, and then AM at 552 left made it 24 to 3 on Farmer's run. And then 35 seconds later, Goins takes it in. Now they're gonna have to ask to issue some chapstick. A lot of kissing going on out there. Chap lips working here tonight in Aggieland. <laughs> and the kickoff. Out of the end zone. And the touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line for Louisiana Tech. That was a strong kickoff, too. Into the end zone. Hit in the end line, inside the goal line, and bounced through. Pretty good kick. 
Yeah, we talked about Josh Scobie. Well, certainly Skates can kick it. And, and Skates, the thing this year, last year, Skates did both the punting and the field goal kicking as well as kicking off. This year, Pegram is getting the shot at the place kicking, and Skates concentrating on the kicking off and punting. First and 10 of the 20 for the Bulldogs. McCown. Gives to Joe Smith. Picks up a couple before. From behind by Johnny Jolly. Well, this defense got a lot of players rolling in there for the Aggies now. Getting some game experience. This is important. Have a chance to get in there. Young guys. Sometimes you never know when some one of the big guys in front of you may go down and you have to step up and play. Earlier tonight, we saw the Ty Warren, number 94. He came out of the ball game, had ice on his hamstring, and uh, one of the best players in the conference, defensive all-conference selection a year ago, Big 12 player. And he's a big part of that defensive line and you know, one of the best defensive linemen in the country. So that's just the point I'm making here is that when you have an injury possibly to, to a guy like that, some younger player may have to step in and fill some pretty big shoes. David Ross getting some opportunities now in that case. The redshirt freshman from Forney, Texas. So McCowan, second and six call for the 24-yard line. 4.52 remaining. I don't know what we're waiting on. Well, head away to all the, all the fans stood up and yelled. <laughs> Is that it? There you go. TV. Don't blame the media, boys. McCowan. What a Norwood. Grab. Out of bounds. Wow, I thought he caught that ball. Sort of the Louisiana Tech sideline as Jones was covering. Yeah, Luke, Luke McCown zing that ball. This ball had some gas on it. You can see up here top Norwood, number 14, breaking to the outside, and the ball is thrown high and outside. Does he bring it down with a foot in? And the ground That's causes the it. Ended. That's sportsmanlike conduct on the offensive team bench. Half the distance to the goal line. Let's see. You catch that ball. That's a catch, folks. His foot was in bounds, and he caught the football, and that's why the Louisiana Tech sideline is unhappy, and Jack McNeil is not going to get a call here. This is Texas A&M, Texas A&M coach. That's just the way it goes sometimes. And he understands that. He's played some tough places this year. He knows there's no different here at Texas A&M. Yeah, and it's it's not going to get any lighter next year where they've got Miami, LSU, Michigan State on the schedule. They've been to Nebraska and Arkansas. They played all over. This year, of course, Penn State and Clemson. Third and 18. You know, I'll say one thing, Gary. Their approach to me is a little bit more is it's different. Louisiana Tech looks at this not as just a moneymaker. They look at it as we're going to build our program to the point that we will play anybody anywhere. And years ago, a school named Florida State did that exact same thing. And that's kind of the, the one that many try, not many succeed to follow. But their attitude is different than many schools that say, yeah, we got a money game at Alabama. You know, a lot of teams throw the football. This offense for, for Louisiana Tech throws the football quite a bit. Bill, we had the fortune of working a couple of games a year ago with the uh, University of Hawaii, and they've got a, a head coach there in June Jones who has a similar philosophy throwing the football. It's that run and shoot type offense. As you see the return here for the Aggies, Jones on the return. But more of my point is they feel like when they throw the ball, they're explosive. They can play in big games, and they can win big games. And Jack McNell has that same type of confidence when it, with his offense going out there. If we can make plays, be productive, you know, we come to a place like Texas A&M, perhaps steal one, perhaps win a big game or two or three. And that's what launches you to the next level like a Florida State has done. It takes time. It's not done overnight, but you have to take those steps and those chances. Louisiana Tech, I remember when I was in college in the mid-1980s, they were, we played them, and they were, they had just emerged to become a Division 1A school, and I was a 1AA school at Northwestern State, and they have gone leaps and bounds. Now in the WAC Conference, they have a chance to compete. First and 10 at the 41. McNeil back in as the quarterback, and he hands off to that's going to be. Man, he's not going to touch down on this carry. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, he's one for two. That's still not bad. The, the other thing for Louisiana Tech, you mentioned they only have the four home games, but the, the one draw they have is by being able to play games in Shreveport Independent Stadium. You're more likely to get some of these schools. They're not going to go to Ruston. 
but they will go to Shreveport occasionally, maybe a two for one. That's right. And that does give them an opportunity like this year when they beat an Oklahoma State there. And that's uh, similar to the last time that they played Texas A&M. It was in Shreveport. That was a 37-17 Aggie victory. That was a 99. McNeil, unload. Incomplete. Well, he got rocked by Jared Morris, the inside linebacker, coming. McNeil did. And do you know what? The young man stepped in there. He knew it. He saw it. There's no way that he did not see Morris coming. But he, uh, he took the shot. And that tells you that this young man, you know, he understands what quarterbacks have to go through. Throw the football. You got pressure coming. Watch Morris. He's going to, or actually going to come to the outside and put pressure on the quarterback. Deliver. He, you know he sees him, but he stands in there and throws the football. Coaches look for that toughness, and he certainly has it. Intended for Tim Van Zandt. And now Aggie's sitting here with a second down and 11. The ball on the. Second down. Okay, going to be second down. They're going to move it back. Take a look at what the Aggies have done tonight. 41 rushes. Look at the production. 198 yards on the ground and 30 passes. 237 yards. I think that's pretty good effort. Pretty good balance. Total yardage, 436 yards for Texas A&M. Louisiana Tech at uh, 222, about half that. Second and 21 from the 48 of the Aggies. McNeil hands it off. A couple of yards that time for the ball Jones, carrier, Stacy Jones. Chris Marshall Eight makes two, the tackle. Jones being rewarded for that two for one block that he did, laid out for Goins' touchdown not long ago. 323 to go in the ball game, and Marshall up a little woozy. We've got some younger players up front on the offensive line. Everyone getting a chance here to play, and that's important, both on the offensive side, the defensive side. Texas AM comfortably ahead in this football game. See the big guys coming up there and setting the line of scrimmage for McNeil. And next up for the Aggies, it'll be Tech. Texas Tech 49 zip over New Mexico. Get an extra day. That was last night. They'll be coming here to Aggie Land. Here's McNeil. There's a little bit of his gift as he dives. I don't know if he slipped apparently near the 45 and got down by the 44 where Jeremy Hamilton gets credit for the stop. You know, you ask, why would you play two quarterbacks? Why would you play um, Reggie McNeil right behind Dustin Long, who had a very good night? The reason is, is simply because this is the X factor that Reggie McNeil brings to the table, and you force defenses to have to prepare for that. We talked to the Louisiana Tech coaches, and they had to prepare for both quarterbacks. They prepared for Dustin Long, and they prepared for Reggie McNeil. That's actually scripted plays in practice, Bill, that were Reggie, Long, Reggie McNeil plays and Dustin Long type plays. They felt that both quarterbacks were a little bit different and that their approach to, to, to defending those players is obviously different. And if R.C. Slocum can have all the schools prepare that way against them, I tell you, it's a lot harder for those defenses to prepare for, for his football team. Fair catch by Brazil. Yeah, and the other thing is, I think, Gary, is that obviously Ferris is down on the charts now. Well, they said, yeah, they'd love to have one guy come in and take the job. What if you play long the whole game tonight and the first play against Tech, he gets waylaid and McNeil has even less experience? You've got to get him some playing time as well uh, because the old one play away still is so very true. Well, I asked the question, um, what would happen if in the first series Dustin Long was to go down? They had talked about it. We, you know, we got the answer was that, well, we put Reggie McNeil in there and hope that he could perform because they feel those two quarterbacks are the future of what they want to go with. At the same time, they feel very comfortable. Mark Ferris is healthy. His, his elbow, they feel like, is not a problem anymore as we see the delivery by McCown going outside. But more importantly is that Ferris is still there. I mean, he's a senior yeah. quarterback. Hey, you've got a great number three you know, to go to, and that's not a problem for Texas A&M. If they go, if they get down to Mark Ferris, that's that's really a big plus because a lot of teams don't have that depth at quarterback. They're building two young quarterbacks. If you take a look at the coverage here on the outside and the secondary making a play on the football. McCown's last six passes have been incomplete, and Luke's numbers uh, taking a little bit of a hit now as McCown is 19 of 38 for 136 yards. and then a swarm of Aggies near the 18-yard line to make the tackle as Jared Morris gets credit for it. Wilson, the receiver. Well, I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here and kind of say that I, I think that at some point during the season this year, 
Mark Ferris is going to be asked to come in and win a football game for Texas A&M. I would not be surprised at all. Cowan fires an absolute bullet that Freddie King makes a great grab. Jackson Appel on the play. Freddie King, a redshirt freshman from Winfield, Louisiana. Look at this pass. Oh, it's a good zip here. Look, look at his eyes. Look at his head position. He sucks all the defense left and then looks, rolls back to the right. He knows where his receivers are going to go. Hey, that's a smart-headed quarterback. Looking away, taking the defenders to look, go with his eyes, and then he goes back to the other side. And this time King hit hard by Sammy Davis. And it'll be second down coming up. Picked up a yard on that play. Yeah, I would think that Ferris, whether it be because of injury or the youth and the inconsistency and neither guy able to get it done. Well, they got some tough games ahead of them. There's no doubt about it. And sometimes you might want a little different wrinkle in there. Someone with more experience or just a little change up. And Mark Ferris is, uh, has shown in, in, in the past that he's a very capable quarterback. 28, 29 starts under his belt. And I tell you, he's getting close to a lot of the Aggie passing records. And I know that RC is very cognizant of that. And, he told me that, you know, if opportunity presents itself, he wants to get him in the game so he might attain some of those things. There is Ferris, the former minor league player that originally signed with AM and then after years in the minor leagues and riding the buses, he saw AM in Florida State back east up at Giant Stadium and said, wait a minute, I missed that. <laughs> On the note, he come back. McCowan is sacked on the play. Penright there again. Yeah, number two sack for, on the night for Penright. That's his fifth on the season. Good job coming around the corner. Speed rusher. They, he's their best outside linebacker pass rusher. Doing a good job coming off the corner here. Watch him get the spin, got the rip up, undercut, and gets around the corner and makes a play. Counting it down here in the final seconds, and that'll be the ball game, it appears, as Texas A&M gets back on the winning track. R.C. Slocum. Picks up win number 120 in his career as the Aggies win it 31 to 3 over Louisiana Tech here at Kyle Field. And a congratulations from Jack Picknell as the Bulldogs fall to 2 and 3. They'll be back in Texas next week at Rice. Texas A&M will be home to take on Texas Tech. Let's go down on Jim Knox. Has the head coach, R.C. Slocum, with it. All right, thank you, Bill. Coach, you got to be extremely pleased. Really dominated on both sides of the football. We'll start with offense. Rushed it for 206 total yards, 237 through the air. Very balanced tonight. I thought we made some progress. I was really pleased. We talked this week and we talked before the game about making progress in the direction we want to go. We want to be a great offensive football team, and we're going to be a great offensive team. We made some progress in the right direction tonight. Out to that defense, you can't say enough by the wrecking crew. A couple of key turnovers, and just about got that shutout. They came close to the shutout. I'm disappointed. Had the one scramble there, but I thought they did a great job holding them to a field goal there before the half. But really proud of the effort. I thought the defense played great. All right, conference play kicks off next week. You guys get Texas Tech at home. That should be a lot of fun. It's always a great ball game. I've been in about 30 of these. They're always good. So we look forward to it. All right, Coach, congratulations on the big win tonight. Bill, looks like the Aggies are ready to kick off Big 12 Conference play. Boy, is it going to be fun. Can't wait for that. Final again, 31-3, Texas A&M over Louisiana Tech here at Kyle Field. We'll be back with a final word or two. Stay with us. Aggies, a little celebration tonight with a convincing win, 31 to three, the final over Louisiana Tech to go three and one on the season. They get a 200 yard passing performance, a 100 yard rushing job from Farmer and a defense that almost throws the shutout and certainly uh, controlled and shut down Louisiana Tech. All said, pretty good, Gary. Well, pretty good offensive production. Jamar Taylor over 100 yards receiving as well, Bill. So good things for the Aggies offensively. I know that R.C. Slocum's happy with the production. The defense obviously outstanding again. The number two defense in the nation coming into this football game. A lot of positives for Texas A&M. And for Louisiana Tech, they came in here, they just played a better football team, just to be honest with you. And, and they knew that coming in here, but they put a game effort out there on the field and just came up a little bit on the short end of it. Well, for Gary Reasons and Jim Knox, this is Bill Land saying so long for our entire Fox Sports Net crew. Our final score once again, the Texas A&M Aggies 31, the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech 
three. We hope you enjoyed it all, a presentation of Fox Sportsnet. So long from Kyle Field and College Station. Sports team.